Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalked the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running the game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, and I'm going to be playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends... Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger. And Joe O'Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. Also, tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim is sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. Uh, they sent yeah. us these fantastic premium metal dice that we are using at our game tonight, uh, and they have been really awesome. I love rolling metal dice, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, they've just been great. So if you do want to get a set for yourself, you can head on over to SkullSplitterDice.com and use the discount code DDUDES at checkout to save 15% on your first order. And when last we left our heroes... They were deep within perhaps the most dangerous part of the city of Drakenheim, the South Ward, where the great falling star fell 15 years ago. Meeting with Lucretia Matthias, the strange prophet-like leader of the followers of the falling fire, our heroes discovered that these followers initiate the new members of their faith by driving a piece of delirium into their own heart. Very weirded out by this insane religious practice, our heroes declined the hospitality of the Abbey of St. Selina, or the Asylum of St. Selina, depending on who you ask, and have decided to make their way back to the clock tower, as that is the safest cloak place that they have nearby a journey though that will require heading back through the south ward and across champions bridge not an easy trek but the most direct route back to the clock tower also um we haven't been over champions bridge since we started adventuring together nope uh used to be a really nice bridge used to be like a central hub for getting across the river well, yeah. When was the last time you were at the bridge? Gosh, years ago. But I've tried to stay clear of this part of the city. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little hazier here than most other places, so mm -hmm. not the nicest. Indeed, this part of the city is by far the haziest of all. Even this close to St. Selina's Abbey and the ruined wall, outer walls of Drakenheim the nestled in the south ward of the city around the crater, the haze is the thickest, a fog that covers and limits visibility to 150 feet at most. Mm. Thus, you wander around this blasted wasteland, for there is no better term to call it. Unlike other parts of the city where the levels of destruction wane off, here so close to the crater, the destruction is palpable and you can see the, sh the, the evidence of the shockwave that was released as the falling star crashed into the city 15 years ago. All the buildings are twisted away from the crater, a point that Vale, you actually find it's easy to orient yourself now that you've managed to go through the haze and that you're seeing the pathway from here. It does give you a little bit of a sense of where you might be, although sometimes you've taken a turn and ended up backwards the way that you came something is clearly strange here and other places you'll see that the devastation isn't just like a blast there are bits of buildings that have turned to glass and even the masonry itself in places is still suspended in midair as if it was blasted off of its building and then forgot 
what gravity was and just stayed floating there. You are outside the gates of St. Selena's and the long drawbridge that leads into it is rising up as Lucretia Matthias heads back into the fortifications. Mm. The building itself, though, lines directly up with the walls of Drakenheim and the Dran River, giving you two landmarks that you could use to navigate your way back if you don't want to go through the haze itself. I think we should probably avoid the haze now that we have a, a good bearing on us now. What do you think? I, I think so. I think uh, sticking close to the river might be a good idea to get to the bridge. Yeah. I, I concur. Oh. Wonderful. I mean, uh, I, I'm not a big fan of the haze. <laughs> it's made me do things. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, it has. <laughs> Uh, um, <laughs> I don't want to get cleanse. into it. <laughs> the juice cleanse. So, uh, yeah, uh, let's let's just let's breathe deeply. Okay. Well, not yet, not yet. <laughs> let's pull up Hold our map breath. and take a look here. So you are at Saint Selena's Abbey, uh, Abbey slash Asylum. Again, the name mm-hmm. changed several times over the years. And from there, if you follow up the Dran River, uh, heading against the 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 stream itself obviously you're not going to swim in the river or is that no no you're going to go along the banks okay so you will first actually come to temple bridge which is another crossing point along the way that you could take champions bridge lying far closer to the clock tower itself so you do have two options for bridges that you could use to cross the city what i'm worried about is uh temple bridge leads us right into slaughterstone square uh which we've been there before. Yeah, that is that is a big no no. Yeah, and, and after being really tired, it might not be good to run right now. Yeah, yeah I'm a little exhausted from all the uh, the haze walking <laughs> and um, I don't know, almost joining a cult. So yeah, I'm and glad you, we uh, reeled you back in. You almost became glass people. Yeah, I got I got I almost became made of glass, which was uh, not something I planned to do today. No, no. no. Um. um are we worried about, I don't know, more glass zombies? Do we know anything about what creatures lurk in the South Ward? Uh, I'm not really sure. I, again, haven't really come past the South Ward very often. So um, how long are we away from the clock tower traveling by regular speed? Traveling by regular speed? As long as the terrain is favorable, you could reach the clock tower within an hour. Of travel. Okay. Um, I can at least help us be a little bit sneaky while we're going through with uh, some mm-hmm. spells that I know. Ooh, okay. So if we want to take it at a, a normal pace, uh, it, at least we'll be a little bit quieter. You'll have to move at a slower pace if you want to move with stealth. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. It'll take about twice as long if you move with stealth. Even if we can get across the bridge, then at least we know our way on maybe less... Less... Uh, dangerous streets than maybe what we've come across here. Yeah, this whole area is unfamiliar, and uh, I think it's best to approach with caution. I'll be quiet. Clink, clink, (laughs) rather than clunk, clunk. I'll clink, clink (laughs) my way. (laughs) But I'm ready to kill anything. So you're going to proceed with stealth? Yes. Forward. Okay, so it'll take longer, but it may be safer. Yes. We're going to go along the river to the second bridge that will take us to the market square. Okay, sounds good to me. Is there anything that you want to do beyond making... Are you going to cast any spells to aid that? I am going to cast Pass Without Trace. Okay. Alrighty. So, with that, do you set out? Yes. I mean, I'm ready to. Yeah, you're. I, I catch up. <laughs> We're already walking. <laughs> Guys, wait up! <laughs> I'm already ahead, as usual. <laughs> My pace is like... Yeah, don't fall too far behind, because if you fall more than 150 feet behind, then we won't be able to see each other anymore. Yeah, I can't see most things, so I live in that world. Yeah. Should we like you have, have to a... stay within 30 feet of me anyways. Should we have like a buddy system? Like, should we attach rope? Should we uh, hold hands? Should hold hands. <laughs> have we just walked together? <laughs> oh. Or we could just Are do sure? that. 
okay, we'll hold hands. <laughs> okay, so we start walking through the haze, holding hands. Walking. Bam, I, I skip actually, a little bit. I actually more like hold your hand like this. I'm like, uh, I'm not really a hand holder. I skip. That's fine. Okay. I'm skipping. It's really Are we loud. skipping? <laughs> yeah, I don't trust loud. you in plate armor. Skipping. Not if we're being quiet. Heading along the east bank of the Dran River through the south ward are a collection of piers and docks that service the Dran River. Of course, as an inland city, large ships don't come to Drakenheim, but the Dran River is wide enough that many boats and trade craft would use this in the heyday of the city, especially as a means of transporting things into the manufacturing hub of the South Ward, whether it was ore, timber, raw materials, and more. And you can see in the distance from here, well, the pea soup of the haze behind you that hangs over the South Ward itself is especially thick. The depth of the river itself, because the city's been built up over the banks of the river, affords you some vision just making out the opposite side of the Dran River, which itself is uh, roughly 500 feet wide. So you can just make out the opposite edge and see in, in the, as the mist hangs over the, the water that in the distance you can see Temple Bridge from here. And Veo, you can already spot that Temple Bridge is not in good shape. Mm. Um, parts of it have crumbled away. And judging on this, it could be possible to make it make your way across. It looks like someone has put up some boards between it, parts where the the bridge itself gave way as a kind of a makeshift way across. So there's still some way of getting across it, but it has, is definitely worse for wear. Mm. From here, though, you cannot see Champion's Bridge, nor can you see too much further up the river itself as they, the haze continually almost runs off, carried on, on a low wind into the river itself. Mm. You head along through the piers, uh, shipyards, past warehouses, and other buildings for a little bit of time before you come close towards Temple Bridge. And I'll have each of you roll me a d6. Three. Four. Two. Okay. Travel goes well. Vale, you're able to lead the group away enough from the thickness of the haze since you're taking the river it's enough that the deep haze doesn't affect you okay. right you're still in the haze but i'm not going to ask for any constant uh constitution checks because it, it's you've got enough fresh air that it's not going to fully affect you yet just breathe over the river <laughs> <laughs> not into the opposite we're direction. just walking along the edge going <gasps> i fall in the river <laughs> <laughs> do you i'm breathing no. Mm -hmm. You almost fall in the river. <laughs> yeah. I grab you. you Which you one of you is leading the way? I am. Vale? Mm -hmm. Okay. Vale, give me a perception check. I am exhausted, so. Okay. Uh, 21. Okay. <laughs> okay. At <Nobody> disadvantage. <laughs> Heading along this way, as you come towards Temple Bridge the destruction is becoming more apparent than it ever has been before. Hmm. There are giant chunks of rock and masonry that have flown through the air and crashed in piles into buildings as if whatever buildings that were underneath the great crater were just chucked through the air and massive pieces of earth and rock were thrown up as they do. You're traveling during the daytime but it's entirely possible these might be pieces of the meteor as well, and they could have delirium in them. In fact, you pass by a, a section of rocks that bear the streaks of the meteoric iron, but there are chisel marks all in the rock. Someone has excavated the delirium from it. So no delirium, but the iron ore. Yeah. With all of these rocks around... Do you think we have a minute to look and see if we can bank on some delirium? If we can scrounge some, I mean, it might be worth our 
might be worth like 10 minutes. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't know. Like, are we in a rush? We have until, what, tomorrow to meet with uh, the Hooded Lanterns and the Paladins? We can look around, but it looks like someone's already been here to take all the delirium. Someone's already been smart enough to check this area and scavenge, so... Who yeah, this there? close to the edge of the river, these would be big deposits of delirium that would be the easiest to retrieve. Past the fog bank, though, who knows what's there? Yeah. I mean, we can go as long as, again, think about it, my, my magic only lasts for so long. So we can look, but we got to be hasty about it. Your call, Navigator. I mean, it'd be worth a pretty big salmon if we did. Pluto, what do you think? Um, I get out my monocle <laughs> and <laughs> my mason's tools. I want to take a look. Let's go look. Let's how, look. Wait, how long have you had a monocle? Oh, uh, I <laughs> 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 and I, I show the other glasses. I just ripped like oh. I just broke glasses in half. <laughs> <laughs> it's just <laughs> are, those, are those my mom's glasses? Did we? Do no, you still no, have no, those? No, no, no. I don't even remember. Where, where, where we left those somewhere? <laughs> yeah, we don't have them. Uh, oh, we left them on the statue. Right. So you just found more glasses and ripped <laughs> yeah. them into a monocle. We're I just looking for the costumes. Look, I'm DIY. Okay. <laughs> Well, if it helps you figure out if there's delirium around, then awesome. it's for it's for like squinting. It's for squinting at rock and being like, oh yes. When you get back Quite. to uh, <laughs> your hometown, you better go see uh, an eye doctor. <laughs> yeah, I have that. one really unbalanced eye because I just I don't know the prescription. Does we have good eye doctors? <laughs> I hope so. Okay. I have coverage. It's travel. I have travel coverage. Well, I wouldn't trust the one. <laughs> so as you pass Dragonheads. the Temple the Bridge Prince. and see these large deposits of stone, do you continue along the path of the the river, or are you going to head further in for the off chance that you can find? Because, Veo, you know that if you head directly east from here, you can follow the road that leads from Temple Bridge and... That should connect back up with Champion's Way, which then if you follow Champion's Way or whatever's left of it would take you back to Champion's Bridge, <laughs> you'd just be coming really close to the Great Quick Crater. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Why did no. you say that? <laughs> the worst that could happen is that we get mutated by the giant crater. Um, and that's a risk I'm willing to take with... Sebastian. I'm now <laughs> redeciding about our decisions. Yes, it is easy to come back, but are we we're gonna have to we're going into the haze more. True. And we're already pretty exhausted. Are we gonna be It's true, it might not be worth a little bit of money just to die slowly by delirium poison. Yeah. I guess I'll put my monocle away. <laughs> but it's good to know that we can come back and okay. take a look when we're maybe a little bit more rested. Yeah, let's keep. We going. ignore the trap that Monty said, <laughs> 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 thus defeating you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine. <And, laughs> Fine. <laughs> Don't seek out my fantastic treasure. <laughs> well, you didn't say fantastic. How much delirium are we? Uh, can your monocle see how much delirium is in the haze? Because if it's if it's magical. if it's a lot, my monocle tells me that my one eye hurts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna continue. Okay, let's continue. Okay, you move safe. forward past the devastation as you come towards Temple Bridge. The streets here. The cobblestones of the streets are covered over by a thick layer of ash and dust and dirt. So the city streets, the lawns that were here, all the detritus, the detritus, detritus, uh, all the dust <laughs> left over from the meteor's collision has settled over this area, covering up most of the cobblestone streets and leaving rubble and dirt everywhere. As you come along the street, Veo, you hear horse hooves and footsteps coming along the street. You don't see anything. It's coming from the direction of the thicker haze. 
Does it sound like it's coming towards us? Yes. Guys, I hear something. What is it? Hooves. Everybody hide. Do we hear it? Give me a perception check. Having a 10. I got 16. Sebastian, you, you hear it. There's voices. There's people talking. Common? Yes. How many like how many horses does it sound like? Multiple? <laughs> you heard the horse who's how much first? Horsepower? One, maybe two? Several voices though. Conversing. I say I say that we uh we take cover and Let's wait to see what we're up against here. Take cover. Is there anywhere that I can go up and climb to get a better vantage? Yes, there is. There's a large ruined building mm-hmm. um, that you could climb up and take cover in. It looks like it must have been once a saddle maker's shop. Should we all pile into this ruined building and just like peek out and wait for the horses to come? Yes, I'm going to get on top of the roof where I can get a better vantage okay. point. You guys stay down here. We're okay. inside. Listen for pork tops. Okay. We all scurry inside. As you scurry go, 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 go. inside the building, coming out of the haze is a large group of armed people. Some of them are carrying crossbows. Others are carrying maces. Few a-, a few axes. And one of them is leading a horse that has been la- laden with several large satchels. The horse is emaciated and sickly looking. It almost looks like it might die at any moment. But the people are walking proudly and strongly. And emblazoned on their shields is the symbol of a falling fire. It looks like there's Mm -hmm. about almost ten, maybe a dozen of them. Where do... Where do we stand with these guys? We just came from their place. I'm on the top of the building. Right, I can't ask you that. <laughs> we like they're not enemies. If well, if they probably have delirium in their hearts. That's yeah. why they look so good. So now I'm starting to think this maybe is a youth kind of potion. Although maybe our no, our goal <laughs> I, I think our goal is to get rid of the haze. Oh. So don't don't drive the delirium in the heart. I don't know, man. It was uh, it was a convincing argument. Like, they look great. I just want to say mm. that they don't they look, look sickly or tired. They or... look way healthier than we do. Yeah. Many of them do. There are two... It's a cure-all. Just very cure-all. hale and healthy-looking warriors that are proudly bearing the delirium in their chests that juts out from, where their, from their hearts. And they're carrying what look to be um, large pickaxes and with them are then a larger group four of them are carrying shields and maces but on the horse you can see that there are several pickaxes as well and then there's a group of others that are carrying crossbows and other satchels of supplies and Veo as you catch a glimpse of it it looks like the horse might be laden in its saddlebags with pieces of delirium it's carrying delirium that they've harvested huh are they what direction are they coming from the direction of the big crater yes Ooh. is this an informational moment pluto do you think or i mean like we have no reason to attack them well like it it would be so out of our way to attack them yeah i mean i we could stay hidden if we reveal ourselves we might be we, I mean, we mean them no <clears throat> harm, and we saved several of them. I can also, um, I can make it look like I have a piece of media in my chest if, if we need it. Can't ever do it. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, we can just let them go by. I don't really feel like talking to anyone. I was kind of having a me day, and mm. um, get it right. Yeah, man, I, I have those days too. Yeah, it's just you know, <laughs> I'm a little exhausted. We just came from an insane asylum full of people who were trying to tell us to drive this stuff into our chest. And we technically, know. like, 
were like, no thank you. Yeah. And now if we talk to these guys, they're going to be like, have you heard the way of do- driving yeah, delirium? We'll have to hear it again. And like, yeah, uh, we, the heard spiel, we heard it. the spiel. We did the whole, <laughs> we, we don't, did the whole thing. We, we thought met about your it. It's, it's like we met much. your prophet. Yeah. Do, just, um, <laughs> where, where are, so are they around the back of the horse so guarding the delirium? There is a woman that is leading the horse. She is dressed in the robes of a flamekeeper as the, the followers of the Falling Fire garb themselves. So rather than the traditional white and blue garments of other priests, they wear black, white, and red instead. Um, she is leading the horse, and then surrounding her are the, are the ones with the shields, the larger ones with the pickaxes, and the groups with the crossbows bringing up the rear. Mm-hmm. And they're walking along the, uh, along the street that this saddle maker shop is on. Are they close enough that I can make out what they're saying, or would I have to move closer? If you want to wait as they pass, you probably could. Yes. Okay, let's let them get closer. I want to hear their conversation. I want to see what they're talking about, what they're up to. Maybe we can just gain intel by staying quiet and listening. Well, I, I, I'm waiting for pork chops. So, I, I'm down. We'll just wait. Okay. Wait it out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also waiting at the top, hoping okay. that the guys at the bottom <laughs> also wait. <laughs> the group passes by and you hear the chatter amongst them saying one of the shield carrying ones says to the other one of the ones carrying a crossbow we did well today we have brought much of the of the stones back this will will go very very well many more are, are coming to join us as well. I have heard that even amongst the the Knights of the Silver Order, there are those that are hearing the truth of our cause and joining us. Even a few of the the old city guard, they have even taken up our cause too and joined us. It is truly miraculous. They are coming and they're going to stay with us and help us in our great purpose. They would say this is this is good, but and they, they agree, they say that it is truly a, a time for rejoicing. People are understanding what we're doing here. As they pass by, I can I need stealth checks from all of you with disadvantage due to your exhaustion. Add 10 for uh, pass the chase. 15. 15. <laughs> as they pass by the ones with the crossbow look they scan across the building they scan across they look like they know how to move through the ruins in a group they're scanning for for threats around, around them and they seem to pass by until in a moment the flame keeper, a flaxen haired woman, locks eyes with Pluto. Oh! <laughs> Pluto. And it turns out I'm just standing up, staring right at her. Yeah, like I ducked <laughs> under the window and you just stood there staring at them? And I, I give her a very mild wave. What part of stealth did you. Like, I didn't you are know! so bad at this. I don't know. <laughs> I. I. I no was, matter what we I do. I was getting a cramp, and I had to stand blink. up. I, we were crouching for too long, and you know how my I, my I, my thighs get. I instantly um, <laughs> I cast Minor Illusion so that it looks like there's like a purple glow coming from Pluto's chest. Okay. How are you? Are you going to attempt to conceal the fact that you're casting a spell? I'm hiding underneath the windowsill. So Does Minor Illusion have verbal components? Uh, just somatic. Just somatic. Okay. Yeah. And and material. But okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can you can stay hidden as you as you cast it. So I make it look like he has uh, purple in his chest as well. Okay. And I stay down where I am. Okay. Make a make a deception check for your minor illusion. Nineteen. Okay. Pluto. You see the, the illusion appear, but of course it 
it's it's in your space, but you're going to need to sell this. So I will give you advantage on the next deception check that you make because because Sebastian's ha- helped you. So you stand up, you see this. Uh, it's shooting through your chest, and it looks like it's coming out of your armor. So it looks kind of strange, like like because he's wearing plate armor. I, it's the best I could do. I freak out. <laughs> 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 I start screaming. <laughs> okay, so you, you start no. screaming. Do you start screaming? Is that how I, you're going to I'm I'm going to hail friend. She looks at you and she says Light be with you. Who are you? Light be with you. I am Pluto Jackson, acolyte of the falling fire. I thought that's what the acolyte means. Maybe it does. You're doing great. <laughs> You're doing great. Have you just... Are you with it, another group that is... I got this new chest wound <laughs> slash homage to your people. Um, got it last night. I met your leader. Read the book. <laughs> heavy. It's a heavy read. Want to let you know that um, I'm just heading to uh, the clock tower. Make a deception check. 20. Technically 19. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I'm not very deceptive. She says, Have you come out here alone? I am Flamekeeper Amara. You are not with another Flamekeeper. You're not with any of our others. You don't have any... Do you have any equipment? Oh, you... You know what? I'm new to the whole shebang, but I f- can I tell you how great this gem in my chest feels? This armor that you wear. Why? Um, it's a habit because I've worn it so much that I have to keep wearing it. But my child, it it weighs down your soul. Yeah. And it's just, it's kind of like your favorite pair of boots. You just got to keep wearing them. Well, this has been a but interesting line of questioning. You must, you're a strange fellow indeed. Would you know that our path is to give up such material attachments in the name of the great age to come? I must have sped through that part in the book i guess i read fast but i didn't take it all in you know you know when you have to read a book a few times to really kind of get the message like i didn't pick that up on the first peruse oh my child come come with us you you, i can't i can't leave the exact position i'm standing in (laughs) (laughs) but you know what i want to just say that it was great to meet you and um yeah, peace, uh, light be with you. <laughs> Make another deception check. <laughs> it's gonna work. One. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he he never rolled advantage from my help before. He did, be, but he's got disadvantage because he's yeah. exhausted. No, no, I'm not exhausted. I'm, I'm, oh, you're I'm not fine. exhausted. I'm fine. Okay, you didn't roll advantage on that last roll? I got a 20 because I'm just... you, you got the highest that you could get. And then now I got a one. So what Sebastian is asking so, me is, can I use advantage on <laughs> after this After you were already granted advantage? Okay. Um, no, no, and the reason why, because she's really suspicious. Super and, suspicious? And, or regular yeah, suspicious? Yeah, because... Oh, geez. She, she says, I... Should I make I, it glow more? I, um, I actually hop down from the building, and I say, my liege, we must go on our journey. Who are these people? And I turn to them. Oh, yes, my muscle. As Veo. You, as Veo steps out, the others raise their their the others raise their weapons in shock. <gasps> Hold your fire. This is very dangerous territory. You didn't tell me we'd be getting into something like this, my liege. They I think they are just a little they're a little on edge to meet you. I did not expect to meet you. Yeah. Here. Well, 
Who is this? Oh, I'm I'm Veo, and Pluto is actually taking me on my journey to find my crystal. So we're we're journeying together. It's part of our our right to to find the light. Ah, you have found another. I work fast when I, I join see. a new. You were, you were worried that we, for she is a tabaxi, you were worried that we would judge her. We are we are accepting people. All will feel the light. I'm used My to being shame. judged. My true shame. I start crawling away from the window, <laughs> uh, so that I so that if I do decide to appear, I'm not immediately next to Pluto. <laughs> so I start to like crawl to another area of this ruined building, so that I could okay. like step out. Make a stealth check. Okay. Stealth pass the trees. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> 24 okay the flame keeper says this is fantastic you shall travel with us all together as we head back to St. Selena's yeah, I, it's, we're so busy and we have um, I have to help Veo get her um, we cannot deter from the path of light leading us towards my heart crystal we walk the same path we will lead you there. We're not ready for St. Selena's. We must go on a different path. I like... Okay. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> and now the other reveal. <laughs> We're about to. It's going to happen. You guys need help. Oh, ten. She says... I sense that there is something amiss with you two. You do not have certainty within your heart. You are wavering. It's the journey. Come, come, come close now. I can't. And, and one of the one of the two men with the pickaxes a- approaches you and reaches out to pull you close. Is that Pluto Jackson? I step out <laughs> <laughs> as I live and breathe. You're alive. <laughs> and once, once again, the others raise their weapons, and the gr- the whole group is very confused. Veo Senya. Yes. You're here too. I am. Uh, guys, I was just heading to the clock tower. There's a lot of uh, stuff that needs to happen there right now. Is my crystal there? Your crystal is there. Oh. I saw it. I didn't know you were still looking for it. Yes. Have you guys heard the way of the light? <laughs> Why do you think we're going to find the crystal? Pluto, you can see, already has his. Yeah, it's You've right already... in my chest. Nice. It looks really good on you. Thanks. Thanks. We, we heard about um, Lucretia and her, her awesome uh, new falling fire thing that she's got going on. Mm-hmm. The delirium. Mm-hmm. So great. It's a beautiful So great. Destiny. All of it's really great. Did you read the book? I've I, I got I got one read under my belt. Oh my brother, it's it's so good to mm-hmm, see you mm-hmm, here mm-hmm. in Drakenheim. It's great to see you too. It's been it's been how long has it been? It's been at least an hour. I think <laughs> I think much longer, Pluto. Yeah. Much much well, longer. Well that's why I wanted to really underball <laughs> the, really the flame keeper raises her voice. What is going on? This is some kind of trick. She says to the others. They're trying to lead us into an ambush of some kind. Why would we... What? Perfect. Sorry, who are you guys? I, I recognize these two, but I'm not sure who you guys are. You are trying to deceive us. What? What is your purpose here? I'm just heading to the clock tower. I'm trying to find a crystal. I have to stand right here. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly still. You are not of our flock. You are liars. Well, so much for not being judgmental. Yeah, you guys are really judgmental. No, you make a mockery of our faith. How so? It's Sebastian. You can You can show them my true my true shame. I turn the glow on his chest green. <laughs> The I, d- I put the wrong rock. The, lar- the larger man that's approached Pluto says, "This is. Are is this? Are you true? Nay. He reaches to touch the shard, and his hand passes through it. I, I my, disable my, my cries, illusion. 
This is sorcery. I have a... My, How dare you? My secret shame. I was not brave enough to take the plunge. I, I, I carry with me a weight greater than a rock in my chest. It's the inability to follow through in in, in the faith flame keeper H- Hana speaks uh, uh, the the flame keeper she speaks up and says this is a trap this is an ambush we have to leave now okay okay bye yeah, bye <laughs> <laughs> We'll we'll carry on our way. Okay, see ya. Like we're just we're just okay. passing by. Yep. We were worried that you would kill us if we didn't if 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 uh, we didn't follow the faith. Kind of happens this is often. Not, you're not going to attack us. Nope. Why would we attack you? No. Nope. We just came from seeing Lucretia, and uh, that we're part's true. Heading towards our tower. That part's true too. We panicked because most people we meet out here are usually going to try to kill us. Yep. Why did you lie to us then? Because we were, were worried you were going to kill us. Yeah. yeah. Or judge us or try to jam rocks in our chest we're without not good us with being ready people. to do that. Yeah. yeah. We need time. We're, we're, Are you out here scavenging? No. No, we're, we're just going to our clock tower. That's uh, it's a place. One of the men says, do you have any of the sacred stones on you? Sometimes. Do you have any of them now? I think we're all out. I, I think actually I picked up one, uh, so you can have it. And I pull out one, and hand it to him. He takes it. I'm sorry, didn't realize they were so. There's a monopoly important. on uh, glowing rocks. Yeah. Yep. We just thought they looked pretty. You don't mean to scavenge, to steal, destiny, in the name of profit. We're just uh, trying to get home. We're just trying to get home. Fine. You can ask Lucretia. She'll vouch for us. So how's Drakenheim? These are dangerous times. Agreed. Obviously. We almost got stabbed. (laughs) But if you do not hold the true faith, do not mean to deceive others, says one of the men. That is a grave sin. It is not for us to be your judgment nor executioners. But there will be a price and a reckoning to come for the for the deceitful in uh, the next age. Noted. Just keep that in mind when you're pointing your crossbows and pickaxes around to different people. Our purpose is righteous. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll be on our way. <laughs> <laughs> well, see ya. <laughs> Tell Lucretia we say hi. But not actually. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. (laughs) And with that, the group parts ways with the delirium piece that they take from you. Guys, I'm liking them less and less every time we encounter them. They're kind of bullies. They're they're bullies. They're spiritual bullies. They think that they're so right. And like the only reason we lied is because the last time we talked to one of them, they said, hey, you got to jam rocks in your chest to be accepted by us. Yeah. You know who else (sighs) thinks they're always right, too? Us? Us? The Paladin. Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh. them too. Us too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that. We're pretty, but we're we are pretty right a lot of the time. But we're usually right. Their yeah. priests are literally cut from the same cloth. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, I, I see where it comes from. Yeah, but there, I don't know, like, uh, there was that slight part of me that heard the words that Lucretia said and wanted it so bad. But at the cost of jamming a rock into my chest and joining, like, they don't seem super friendly they don't seem to respect my individualism yeah i don't i don't they know. literally it's... were judging me for being a tabaxi yeah even though they said they wouldn't they said they th- we thought that they would judge you for being a tabaxi but they won't which means that at some point they judged you for being a tabaxi yeah. like right then that there, them saying it means like, I, I felt yeah. judged. I think, <laughs> I was I think somebody judged. being like, I don't judge you for what you are, is somebody saying like... Yeah, they, they thought about they, judging they me. They thought about judging <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. So you proceed further along the coast? Along the, the right. banks of the river? Sneaky, sneaky. Because <laughs> we're doing so well at that. Okay. 
As you continue, you can all roll me a d6. So they don't like deceit, so let's we won't play the oh, deceit. One. Five. Six. Okay. We won't do any more deceitful Veo. moves. Give me a perception check. Fourteen. Okay. You head forward through the ruins. And moving ahead with stealth, Mm -hmm. continuing to to do so, Mm -hmm. you find yourselves along the edges of the water in, in a series of old ruined tavern buildings, warehouses, and some small smithies. And... Make a stealth check, Veo. All of you. Yikes. 23. 25. 16. Okay. So. Pluto. <laughs> as you walk forward. Clunk. Give me clink, clink. a perception check as well. No, you ain't clink, clink. On a 16? Clink, clink. Um, 21. Okay. Oh. okay. You see it. And it sees you <sighs> at the same time. <laughs> eye contact? It's not quite an eye contact situation. Sebastian, one more. Um, stealth? One more stealth check, yep, from you. Uh, not stealth, perception, sorry. I got a six. Okay. Pluto, here's what you see. As you travel forward, a bank of rolling fog comes forward. And in amongst the ruins here, stepping out from around a corner is a hideous, misshapen creature. It moans lowly as it stumbles forward into the street right in front of you, almost accidentally seeing the group. Of the 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 um, it sees Pluto, but the way that this, that this goes down is Sebastian doesn't see it, Veo doesn't see it, but it doesn't see Sebastian and Veo either. Pluto is the only one that notices it, but it notices Pluto at the same time. (laughs) (laughs) Pluto, are you hungry? Was that your stomach? Can it be both? Both what? The creature (laughs) is a misshapen monstrosity standing about 12 feet tall. And it looks like it is composed of four creatures. Or sorry, it looks it has four sets of limbs, pardon me, because it looks like it is composed of two dock working ogres that were fused together. It has a head that has a head on the front and the back and are this large bulbous mass. And its limbs a, a pair of arms, a right arm and a left arm hang off the top of its body, one out the front of it and then another out the side with these three limbs and then it stumbles forward with four legs and you can see that like it has it looks like its torso is two torsos that were thrust together and spines of metal and glass and bits and, and almost embedded bits of and flecks of delirium are in its stony hide as it lumbers forward um and as it does so pluto you notice that there are several other humanoid forms not unlike it in the area around you as well you can all roll surrounding us you can all roll for initiative oh no (laughs) oh no this is probably uglier than the one we saw at oscar's house Mm mm-hmm you and me haven't seen it. Nope. 
And it hasn't seen us. Nope. Pluto. You're, gonna, you're just getting spotted a I'm lot. I'm going to distract it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, it... Even with passive traits, I am not stealthy. Yeah, that was you added the plus ten, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's your what's your uh, uh plus one? You have a minimum of eleven. Yeah, I've been rolling. So Bad. first, Sebastian and Veo, I'm gonna have the two of you place yourselves on the map where you're hiding, because the two of you are still hidden from it. Mm. Well, we'll put me, I say, on the other side of the. Uh, the, I don't know where they're gonna be, so um, he's on the other side of the stone. You're over here. Yeah. And then uh, I'll place the creature, and then we'll place Pluto. Okay. I'm gonna stare it down. Oh, it's big. <laughs> it's very tall. You big. <laughs> <laughs> Does that seem fair? <laughs> yes. We're, we were all close enough to still be having a conversation and traveling through the streets, but uh, you were up ahead it's a little funny, bit. It's funny. I just picture us like we're walking as a group and we're saying stuff and we're laughing. And then I look around and you guys are gone. And then I look up and there's a monster. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm alone again. How am I alone? Where are you guys? You guys are just naturally so sneaky that yeah, I lose like we're you. Not, we're, we're just like okay. being stealthy and you're not. So let's roll for initiative. <laughs> 14. 14 for Veo. 20. 20 for Sebastian. 19. What time of day is it? It's the afternoon. Mm, okay. We should really travel more at night. <laughs> is night more dangerous? Well, not for me. <laughs> not I'm, for you guys. People can't yeah, see I, me with dark vision. <laughs> so. I should just try to get some dark vision. If I got dark vision... Yeah, it would make things a lot easier. Um, if I get more magic, I may be able to give you dark vision. Maybe, maybe there's like a uh, uh, goggles. Yeah, I can get goggles. <laughs> we'll have to get you a pair. <gasps> Never own goggles. And we'll all have to get goggles, and I'll be able to team things. <laughs> yeah, it'll be part of like the shirts. I'm gonna have to change it on my ears. Or what if I got something okay, else? Okay, so see. like a monocle. In the first round, Sebastian, Veo. And the other smaller creatures are surprised. But the large one and Pluto are not. So Pluto, as it comes around the corner, you are the first to act. I yell, uh, Cronenberg! And I run it. <laughs> I run at it. <laughs> and I draw my spear. Okay. And Ashton doesn't get it. I, I stab it. And I crit. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> I go, ah! Skull splitter crit! Skull splitter crit! And I, I panic run. And because uh, I only know how to either talk to it or die, and uh, I ain't dying. Okay, Wait. this massive creature. <laughs> as I'm talking to it. What did I say? I'm just saying words. Okay. We're just like, where are you running to? <laughs> and, then, ah! and I let out my mid conversation, and Pluto <laughs> screams and runs into the fog. Uh, Fifteen damage. Okay. So you rush forward in the fog, spotting this horribly misshapen beast, and you cleave in t into it, splitting through some of the, the, the flesh and bone for 15 damage. And is it large? It is a large creature. Uh, I'm going to do trip attack. Okay. So, so I'm going to make a strength 16, saving throw? yeah. Okay. It has four legs, so it's difficult to trip. Oh. He so has advantage. Himself? So... It, he gets a 17. Boo. Okay. And he takes an extra four damage. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to hit it again. And I'm, I'm stabbing it with my, my sword. PPS. Uh, would you accept a uh, 12? Uh, that is a hit. Okay. For uh, nine more damage. It's a massive creature. Hitting it is like a broadside of a barn. And this time I'm going to do... Uh, Nothing. Okay. The massive beast rears back Hello. and screams out, and you can hear that the two sides of its head seem to be having an argument with each other in some sort of gibberish language. Like one side of the head cries out something, one side of the head cries out another thing. But then in, in the midst of all of it, it brings 
it puts both of its left arms on this one mace that it's carrying and both Uh of its right arms on the other bit of this tree stump or masonry Uh and slams them together (laughs) at you at the same time. No! No. Getting a 19 and a 9. Miss. So it swings both these around. (laughs) I duck. And you duck. (laughs) And there's just this clamoring sound (gasps) as the the, the two weapons uh, slam together. But manage to, but you manage to avoid. Them. I guess you would have like had to deflect them out of the way somehow with your shield, because yeah, wha- I catch one of them and nice. I put it into the other. Nice. At the end of the round, you can see Veo and Sebastian. There are several lurking shapes coming out of the ruins. Um, around you are several other misshapen creatures that look like the remnants of various people. Almost many of them look like common folk, but that they have been mashed and changed into one another. So you can see that one hobbling forward at you is a woman that has been merged in much the same way as this larger creature with a dwarf. And the two of them are hobbling together at you, screaming out uh, in pain and uh, with this grotesque cries. Another appears to be two other men that are conjoined together back to back um others uh another looks like two people that were embracing that were fused together up the front (laughs) and they're warbling forward um all of them are carrying shards of glass or clubs and some of them even even one of them is almost still trying to carve itself in half to separate its own two halves. Like the top part of it is trying to carve the other half of it off. And as it does so, it it does so, it finishes the wound, and then it pulls itself back together again as they rush forward. Sebastian, you are the first to act. Hey, oh, I think we're surrounded. Uh, can I see the big guy? Yeah. From where you are? Yes, you can. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to run forward up here and I am going to try to web the big guy in between like the rock and the building and okay. just spray web Ooh. all over him so that he's <laughs> stuck right where he is so that Pluto can just wail away on him. So this massive sticky, sticky webs kind of spring out from you and, and try to lash him against the side of the crumbling building. Yeah, it goes cool. right over uh, Pluto's shoulder and just expands out nice. all okay. over the creature. Cool. So he'll make a dexterity saving throw at the start of his turn. Do you want to place the web template on the, on the board? Is there anything else from you, Sebastian? Um... I duck in to those rocks there. Okay. Uh, next up is Pluto. Uh, I'm going to keep wailing on him, but okay. I, he's not webbed yet, right? He is not restrained by the webs yet. It's got to wait for his turn. They're just kind of appearing there. Uh, 12 hits, right? Yep. For 10 damage. And so I'm going to kind of cut at his belly, and then I'm going to kind of step on the rocks and try to go for like the upper torso doing the work and i miss i miss spectacularly <laughs> so you cut <laughs> in in towards him uh slicing him at, at, at the belly he seems almost the pain that he, this creature is in by being two entities fused into one body is greater than even the pain of your weapon as it cuts cuts into him it doesn't assay his screams at all his emotional pain <laughs> yeah uh and i'm gonna try to knock him down knock him prone knock again. him prone knocking him prone uh, 18. I get a natural 20. On Boo! My okay. Skull splatter crit. Yeah. <laughs> Wish I had that on the attack roll, actually. <laughs> okay. And that's me. With that, we return to the creature who is... gets a 8 on a saving throw against the webbing. Yes. He gets wound up in all that webbing and he cannot move very well. And he brings his weapons forward, still trying to smash at... Pluto, with disadvantage on his first attack, uh, although that will still be an 18. I think that's not enough. And the second one, though, uh, is uh, a 20. That hits. Nope. So he, he out of the way. <laughs> muscles forward, and you dodge out of the, the, the first one. The second one slams you right in the head. Ow. 
and it's like a bell ringer. Your helmet shakes and, and your perceptions are are dulled for a moment as you take fourteen bludgeoning damage. And that was the ma- the mace. Yeah. Oh, mace to the face. <laughs> Ow. Well, that's the worst place for a mace. <laughs> Such a disgrace. <laughs> Veo, it's your turn. Okay. Um, I'm going to start by activating my feline agility uh, with my dread ambusher. And my goal is to get all the way across up these rocks and use a little bit of my climbing speed to get on the second floor of this building. Okay. How tall is this building? Uh, this building reaches up to a height of 30 feet at okay. its highest, although the top that's the top of the timbers. Okay, cool. I think I can make it just there. Uh, and then I take out my bow. Yeah. And I take my three shots. Um, is he? So is he restrained? He is restrained in the web. So yeah. Advantage. Yep. Yes. Okay. Oops. Sneak attack. Oh, it's sneak, sneak attack. attack. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, ten. <laughs> so Sebastian has lined up the perfect shot. <laughs> You get up, you rush up to the, what happens is you're rushing up and you just, you f- are too quick off the shot. Like your position hasn't been fully established mm-hmm. as you come up the top and the shot just narrowly goes wide as he's thrashing in the webs. I'm just no, to the left. <laughs> too excited about this big monster that I want to kill. Oh uh, boy. I take my second shot. Uh, that one is going to get a 17. That hits. That's though. money. Ooh, Way all better. right. Sneak attack. D8 with my dread ambusher on this. Ah, that sound. Um, 25 damage. So the shot hits him in one of his two jugulars. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a spurt of blood um, that it erupts, and it's like a bile that oh. comes out, uh, leaving him bloodied. Nice. I take my last shot. Twelve. It's enough to connect. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I hit with a few twelves. That's good. Seventeen. The second shot hits him in the shoulder, although there's four shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> One of his many. And um, I want to use my bonus action to, if I can, hide using my cunning action. Um, the position that you're in, do, uh, you're still being directly observed by t- by at least s- by several creatures or on the Or could the board. I dash further in? Yes, you could. <laughs> All right, I'm dashing further in to get to the window at least. <laughs> Set up a sniper shot. Okay. Finally, the the misshapen mass of creatures shamble forward. One, two. How far can they go? With its four legs, it bounds up into the building and rushes right towards Veo. Does it reach her? It does. It dashes. The other one bounds forward. Um, running on bo- all of its legs and hands, like it drops down, oh, almost like a weird, creepy. like creepy spider, and rushes forward and dashes right up to Sebastian. Oh, this is my worst nightmare. <laughs> the other one in the building there leaps to the top. Uh oh. And another rushes up to, uh, the last one rushes right up to Pluto. Hello. Okay. The one at the top comes up up and it just blorts and blorts <laughs> oh. and spits downward from both of its mouths at Sebastian sending a horrible mass of sticky acidic goo hurtling towards you since it's elevated it does so with advantage oh no I'm being blorted on <laughs> getting a critical hit <laughs> <laughs> you look up and it gets in your it's eyes in the goggles <laughs> <laughs> they do nothing. <laughs> Sebastian, you take six poison damage, and you need to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, and it, its goggles. second attack, it's a 13 to hit. That's 
Uh, can I cast shield? Yeah. I cast shield. Okay. Uh, but the acid's already in my eyes, and uh, I got a 19. You are not poisoned. <laughs> so in a panic, the, the acid goes in my eyes, and I immediately throw up a shield. <laughs> And I'm just there like, oh, God. And then the other guy can't hit me because of the shield. But I also can't see what's going on. And I'm freaking out <laughs> as I'm pulling the goo out of my eyes. Mm-hmm. That came out of his stomach. Yep. Just so you... Do remember. you yell that at me? Well, that came out of his stomach. Thanks, Pluto. Thank you. It wasn't out of okay. a bile or anything. It was out of his stomach. Yeah. It okay. smells like it. The other creature comes up beh- uh, towards... Um, Pluto, and as it does so, its limbs extend longer than they should, almost as if an ex- an elbow ended up somewhere in the other arm of one of the creatures, <laughs> and it swipes at you. Hey, get out of here. Uh, it gets, uh, with its two attacks, it gets a 17 and a 21 to hit. 21 hits. The 21 hits for eight bludgeoning damage. And the as the arm comes down, the the triple jointed arm wraps around hey. you, and you are grappled and left restrained. What? Get out of it! You, uh, it's got me. Help! Help! Bail! Pork chops! Pork chops! What? Uh, Sebastian, it is your turn. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Uh, so I finish rubbing the uh, the acid vial out of my eyes, and. Um, Oh, goodness. I'm going to just... There's the guy in, in base contact with me, and I'm going to try to uh, blast him with a firebolt. I actually do need a concentration check as well right. for the webs. Concentration. 22. Okay, you're good. Uh, so I'm going to try to just uh, blast the guy in front of me with a firebolt. Okay, you do so with disadvantage because he's right in front of you. 12? That is a hit. They're just normal folks where they don't have any armor on. Nice. Normal folks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they so, were normal folks. They're they're so <laughs> normal. These are the most normal folks we've met. These in are just your normal abnormals. <laughs> Their neighbors just trying to say hi to us. <laughs> we're just stabbing them. Uh, that's going to be 14 damage on them. Ouch. So I, I literally hold my hand against his chest and just blast fire into him. <laughs> yeah. As I'm like falling back against There's the rocks. There's a gout of flame. It The attack leaves him bloodied, but not destroyed. Ah, nuts. <laughs> Fail, <Anyone>? help! <laughs> Pork, chop. <laughs> Pork chops! <laughs> Paluto, it's your turn. So, uh, weird third arm guy has got me grabbed yes and you are restrained by the grab and is it a bony hug like is it a kind of a gross hug? it is extremely gross and <sighs> very uncomfortable like those awkward hugs from people that you only sort of know that last a little bit too long <laughs> i you can tell how uncomfortable i am uh <laughs> so i'm going to do so i'm like i'm with him yeah he's grabbed me yeah but i grab him <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you like that. When the world hugs you, <laughs> hug back. <laughs> and I'm going to just... I want to throw him into the web. Okay, so you want to attempt to grab him and throw him in, into the webbing. Because I'm okay. super strong. Okay, so make a strength, uh, an opposed strength tech check to try to grab him. Straight up strength? Yep. Uh, 22. I get an 18. So there's a quite a wrestling match occurs, but you are able to pull him around. Uh, into the the webbing, he's still got a grab on you, though. Okay. Yeah. Um. Can I? Can I? Can I get out of his grab? Uh, if you have an, uh, do you want to use your action surge to break out? Mm, I'm happy if he's in the web. Okay, he is in the web now. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. Enjoy the web, loser. <laughs> I panic. I got. I got panicked when he grabbed me. I was like, don't. <laughs> so you push him into the web. So you're restrained. He might be restrained. The Etten's restrained, and the horrible, the, this horrible monstrous ogre-like creature, comes around and is going to smash you. And now the disadvantage that he had is canceled out by the advantage, because you're restrained now as well. So he makes his two attacks. It would really help if I didn't roll a two and a three, though. 
<laughs> Thank you, Skull Splitter. <laughs> um, so he he tries to to smash his way forward and, and clobber you, uh, but both the attacks go completely wide. And as you wrestle forward, you manage to evade the swipes. And because he's probably trying to not hit his friend, right? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I assume no, in my head. No, I make up the narrative no, in my no. head that he's just trying to miss his friend. No. Um, with that, uh, we go to Veo. So, Veo, one of these creatures is right up to you uh, and has you cornered in this room. Holy macaroni! And I use my bonus action to cast Zephyr Strike. Okay. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and, uh, See ya. <laughs> I jump out the window but rake my claws along the building to kind of like steady myself down there's a window on that side there is a window on that side right in front of me okay and I'm like (laughs) I'm down um so that's 15 okay um and then (laughs) I think I have 45 more feet with my (laughs) Zephyr Strike and I start running back towards the uh, furthest um, (laughs) place I can go I don't know (laughs) (laughs) you just you just go wherever you want yeah Yeah. Um, you want to be like there (laughs) yeah sure (laughs) and um, I still fire at the big guy in the webs okay big old web shots still advantage yep yeah you got him Veo that um 16 that's a hit sneak attack and sneak attack we're wrestling <laughs> you got it you got veil 25 damage it oh. ruptures his other jugular <laughs> yes. Yes. And deprived of oxygen to his brain he collapses in a heap of flesh and webs and blood and it's everywhere. Is he like still <laughs> hanging in the web? Yeah, so just yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> just draining out from there, like yeah. a marionette, all yeah, over yeah, Pluto. Yeah, yeah. And, yes, all uh, over. Me. <laughs> then uh, I heard Pluto shout, "Help me first. So <laughs> I, I aimed did. towards I the guy on uh, him with okay. my last shot. Uh, nine. Oh, you get advantage, right? Because he's in the webs, or, uh, no? or he hasn't been restrained the by the web. The, but because the webs, I'm grabbing yeah. him, uh, you help? are grabbing him, but. Your your grab doesn't restrain him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that was a nine. It was a miss, I'm afraid. It goes wide. Mm. Shoo! <laughs> happens. I killed the big guy! Yes! Nice. Yep. You cheer as Pluto is getting grappled Hugged. and I'm getting <laughs> covered in bile. <laughs> nobody, nobody cares right now. Yeah, I killed <laughs> the big guy. <laughs> We're like... <laughs> it's still dealing with a bit of the situation here, Vale. Okay. <laughs> with that... The the creature that is in the webs is not restrained by them. And he manages to push himself forward, out a step out of the webs. No. And as he does so, he brings you into a deeper hug, crushing you close, hey. Pluto. And because he's he's got you, he hits automatically, and you take 10 points of bludgeoning damage. He just grabs and crushes. The one right up in front of Sebastian just goes to bite you, Sebastian. Um, getting a uh, 22 and a 10 to hit. One of them hits. Uh, for a big old four damage. You know, he just, it's just one of the mouths. It, it's just... It, you have a mouth there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just comes up, bite. It bites you in the leg. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the other one continues to vomit on you. No! Why do I keep looking up? And it crits. <laughs> Is this guy gonna... No! So you get bit just in time to look up and see more of this horrible bile fall down towards you. Mayo, do something about the puking guy. I gotta get him some Pepto Bismol. <laughs> you take nine points of damage from th- that attack, uh, and then the other one uh, goes completely wide with a paramount uh, one. So That's I gotta do a couple concentration two. checks. Yeah, two. Uh, that's thirteen. And you're good. And the second one is going to be oh, um, nice. uh, 17. Okay. The other rushes out back towards Veo. Um, and as it does so, it pulls itself in- inwards and sends an arcing projectile vomit <laughs> towards Veo. No. Look out, it stings. <laughs> uh, getting a 20 to hit. Oh, yeah. Close your eyes. 
for nine points of poison damage, and both of you need to make uh, constitution saving throws against the poison. Oh, yeah. Uh, is our exhaustion still... Exhaustion doesn't apply to the saving throw. I got a Not 23. Yet. You're good? 21. Okay. You both managed to slough off the horrible poison. Crit. We go to the top with Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian puts his goggles on. <laughs> <laughs> That'll help. <laughs> I can't actually see though. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um, I'm going to. I'm just going to try to firebolt this guy in front of me again. Okay. With disadvantage, right? That's correct. Fifteen. That hits. Once again, you wrestle back at him as he bites you. You place your hand on his shoulders and fire the firebolt at point blank range. As I do, and it's going to get a beautiful, yeah, 16 more damage. It just tears down the spinal cord of this creature, and it slumps to the ground in a wet heap. Nice. I very courageously crawl to Pluto, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm actually just going to like to get into a position where I'm, I'm not in base contact with the guy that's grappling him, but I'm close by. Okay. And I'm just going... Like moral support. Yeah, I, I get close to you and I'm like, I'm here, man, you're going to be okay, as it's like ripping into you. It's hugging me. Pluto, yes. it is your turn. I, I frantically start swinging my sword at him. And disadvantage? Yep. Does my grab do anything to him? Uh, it keeps him from moving. Okay, uh, I got a 16. That hits for 15 damage, oh, yeah. leaving him bloodied. So as you grab him and you and he grabs you, you manage to take your sword out and stab it downward, ripping it across his back. And I'm going to try to trip him. Okay. Trip, 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 tripper. He fails and is pushed to the ground. And you're, you manage to, like, he's still grabbing you. He's on the ground and you aren't pulled down with him. Okay, and yep. then I'm going to try to stab him in the limbs. <laughs> One of the limbs. Uh, and do I still have disadvantage? Yes. So, but, that, but because he's prone, that cancels out. Okay, so I got a 21 to hit. Yep. For uh, 11 damage. The second blow, knocking him to the ground, you drive your blade into what passes for this creature's chest, <laughs> and it stops moving and its grip loosens. Yay! And um, and then I, I go, you got something in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. It just your eyes look really red and poisoned. <laughs> uh, and it's a new a, look I'm trying out, that's Pluto. My turn. <laughs> okay. These creatures, um, the, the first one continues to rush towards Veo. Uh, can it get... Up. Is it Veo's turn? Oh, oh yeah, it is Veo's turn. It's because the Etten is destroyed. So yeah, it is Veo's turn. Ha <laughs> ha! Thank you for catching me, cheaty I... cheaty DM. <laughs> yeah, man. Jeez. I turn around and I yell, "I am not a baby bird. That is not my food preference." And I <laughs> fire at him uh, for uh, twelve. That is a hit. Yeah. I'm glad these guys are easy to hit because there's been some low rolls, but. <laughs> They're, they're getting by. 20 damage. Nice. <laughs> oh, take God. another shot at him. Oh. Nope. Critical miss. The shot leaves it bloodied, but it continues to shamble forward. And I use my bonus action to dash. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. And I, um, I run towards... Uh, Come on over. Yeah, Pluto and... Veo, over here. Come on up over. <laughs> Dash, dash, dash away. How far okay. can you go? Uh, hmm. 60 feet. Oh. Okay. <laughs> she does three laps of us. <laughs> you, you're running circles around us. Circles around us, yeah. Taking advantage of their elevated position, these creatures continue to s to bombard you with their projectile bomb. Oh, yeah. Bomb. He's up there still. <laughs> uh, totally one forgot. firing two against Sebastian and the other firing two against Veo. Wait, is there more than one? Yeah, the the, the one that Veo oh. shot is still alive. He can he can vomit that far. Uh, he moves closer oh, so that okay, he can. that that makes more he sense. Can. I was like, wow, that's a skill. <laughs> yeah, no, they they've got they've got a range of uh, thirty feet. Oh wow. Yep. That's 
some projectile. I had the flu once, and uh, <laughs> I think I know what they're talking about. The 30 foot. I mean, I've had the flu more than once, but I had a flu bad enough once. That so, I... Sebastian, against you, I get uh, two hits. Uh, no crits, though. Uh, what are the hits? Uh, 21 and 18. Yeah. It's a total of eight damage, poison damage, and I'll need a constitution saving throw from you. And against Veo, he's on the ground, so he doesn't have advantage. But Veo, I get 17 and 21. Both hit. And Veo, that'll be six poison damage for you and a constitution saving. Uh, con- yeah. I get 12. You succeed. Okay. Nine for my con. I think I'm just going to let go of You the fail, Veo, you're poisoned. Okay. I, I remove my web. Okay, we go to the top of the round with Sebastian. Um, I'm going to move away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a little this sick of getting a acid? puked on, so I kind of run past everybody and cower in some more rubble. Okay. And I'm going to fire a firebolt at the injured guy over here. Nice. Now oh, that's a crit. Nice. Oh, baby. Nice. Nice. He's got splitter crit. He's got splitter crit. So many crits tonight. All right, so. Twenty-two more damage. Nice. It blasts him apart. <laughs> yeah, it does. Boom. That was a warning shot. It wasn't. That was a kill no. shot. It wasn't, guys. No. It wasn't a warning shot That's at all. Kill shot. That was the joke. Pluto? Uh, I'm going to start hucking hand axes at Acid Mick Jerkface. <laughs> okay. Do it to it. Uh, you know his name. Yep. I read it in a manual. Uh, <laughs> uh, 15? It hits. For, I only add my strength. 11 damage. Oh, my God. And almost a crit. Uh, and then another 11. So you huck the two axes up, and they go sailing up. One lands on the one head that it has, one lands on the other, and it drops and falls forward to the ground. I retrieve my axes. <laughs> <laughs> the dust settles, and the streets are quiet once again. We're going to hit to our break. See you in a few minutes. We'll be back in And 15. we are back from our break. We've taken our short rest. We've recuperated. Nom down a few sandwiches. Nom, nom. We're ready to go. Uh, before we delve back into the ruins, a special thank you to Axe and Shield for providing us with the awesome gaming accessories. Uh, we have the initiative tracker. He also makes flight stands, and he has a Kickstarter going on right now. So once again, that's Axe and Shield. Check out his Kickstarter. Uh, he makes really awesome gaming accessories that will really elevate your game. And a uh, big shout out to Tabletop Audio. Whether you're getting acid in your face or there's a multi arm monster uh, grappling you and giving you the worst hug ever, you can be sure that Tabletop Audio is providing the greatest sound experience. They are free. Uh, tabletopaudio.com. We use it for all of our ambient noise. And finally, thanks to uh, 100 Years Boar for the amazing. Sultry voiceover in our intro video. Check them out here streaming on Twitch. If you're enjoying the stream and you want to help support our work, you can check out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We have an absolutely phenomenal Discord community exclusively for our patrons where you can discuss role-playing games, the latest episode of our show, uh, or just have fun chatting about your favorite geeky geeky topics. or the latest episode of Drakenheim. Lots of speculation in there. Lots of cool DM tips happening there. Uh, we also discuss like episode ideas as well in there and get lots of great feedback from patrons. So we'd love to hear from people through that. So check it out. Tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim is sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. Uh, they've sent us this fantastic collection of premium metal dice that we've been using. There were a lot of Skull Splitter crits. So many crits. And a few misses by you, which is fine. We're okay with that. Yes. As long as we're I still got two crits, crits against you, Kelly. I know. <laughs> yeah, same two guy, against with you. The same with guy. the same guy, yeah. Same attack. Yeah, that guy well, was out for blood. You know, it happens. It's Sebastian's lot in life. But yeah, Skull Splitter Dice, uh, you should definitely go buy a set of their dice, and you can find them at SkullSplitterDice.com, and if you use the discount code DDUDES, you get 15% off your first order. And the giveaway link will be active after the stream tonight, so be sure to check back and get in on that for 
uh, May's giveaway for a free set of Skull Sweater Dice. With that, let's return to the ruins. As the haze settles back in over the field where you have slaughtered these misshapen victims of the falling star that came 15 years ago, what fate these people suffered, you can know that the pain that they have been in is over. Uh, so we did a good thing. Are they are they obvious followers of the falling star? No, they they were the outcome of the literal oh, falling star. Oh, okay. I thought they yeah. were like wearing garb and like no. <laughs> have things in their chest. Yeah. It the the look of anguish on their faces is palpable. Um, and looking at their forms now, you can see how emaciated or distended or bloated in awkward ways they have become um, truly monstrous results of that eldritch eve. There are two things that I've realized. Number one, I, I'm disgusting. I'm covered in bile and blood, most of it my own, some of it not. The second thing is, not only am I disgusting, but I haven't washed these clothes in months. <laughs> Why do you think people call me smelly? There's no place to wash in Drakenheim. Yeah, you just kind of roll with it. I have taken a lot of liberties do with we, my... I don't even want to go in that water. Do we have a, like a decent water source at the clock tower? Like, can I, can I rinse out these clothes? Can I at least bandage up these wounds and... I would really like to clean my face off, the, but there's nothing I'm anywhere. I'm suffering from poison, so I definitely need to take some of The poison. only thing you could count on at the clock tower would be rainwater. Now you gotta watch more. Would be, <laughs> would be, yeah, would be collecting rainwater on days when the rain is normal. I might build a contraption at the clock tower to collect rainwater so that I can wash my clothes. Like a barrel? I would <laughs> confidently say that Veo has almost certainly done that already. Thank yeah. you, Veo. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't. It was the. I, I don't think you would have survived this long in the city if you didn't. Do oh that. no no yeah. no. Uh, yeah. When we get back there, I'm having a bath. Well, we use it for drinking, not bathing. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. hold on. You're just gonna throw around bath like we don't. This is a luxury. Yeah, this is <laughs> a res- get in here. I'm I'm already in it, buddy. <laughs> 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 then you um, know. Then and, you know. And, and I'm okay with it. And, and straight up, by by and large, like collecting rainwater in although Drakenheim was a city that had functioning aqueducts um in its heyday a, a lot of water collection would still have been uh supplemented by by rainwater collection mm-hmm. so that's something that all of you would know as a as a thing that you do to get water yeah drinking water yeah well, yeah no you divvy it up like okay maybe you're okay with being as smelly as you are but like you could go for a I swim can't i can't <laughs> Can, I mean, like, I would ask you to clean me, but I don't. That, I don't think our friendship. We're not that, that close. No. we're not that close. But like, we're my best friend. But no. even, um, the one place you, that you wouldn't get drinking or bathing water from would be the Dran River, and because it is even in when Drakenheim was a, a city, you just didn't do that because that water is nasty. No, it's where you push your enemies into. I, I think of uh, back home. I have a place where the boats come and go, and you just don't swim yeah, in you, that yeah, area. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a little bit poisoned right now, so I'm gonna take some of this ointment that we had from Blackjack Mel, rub it on me. Probably still cool. doesn't smell the best, but neither so do I. you're no longer poisoned, and you regain 18 hit points. Woo! I think there's one dose of that left. One left. What's the greater healing potion give? Uh, the greater healing potion is 20 hit points. I'm gonna drink one of those. Okay. I don't have any potions. You can have my uh, potion of greater healing. I think you have okay. one dose left of the the ointment. We have one ointment left. Uh, is there is there a way that we can like stop for an hour maybe? Um. I, I mean, like the the potion helped, but I could I could use like some bandages and like tending to my wounds and. How's everybody else doing? You guys doing okay? I mean, I'm pretty okay. If you need to, we can. But I, I'm fine now. But um, I mean, I'm I'm tough. I can I can. I'll protect it. you. I'm just do worried you, about the haze. Do you promise? I promise. If you want to take a short rest, taking one along the edge of the water on the docks would probably be the safest place to do so. But there's still a risk. I say we avoid it only because I just drank that potion. 
<laughs> yeah, <I laughs> just now I'm being too. greedy. <laughs> okay, that's fair. I'm I'm fine. I'll. I promise that if you die. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I promise you will never die. Never. Ever. All right. Aww. <laughs> Wrestle. Uh, oh, actually, I have a potion of healing. I have one. Po wait. I have one potion of healing. Do you want a regular potion? I'll take it. Okay, cool. Okay. We'll Shrug it. Round and back potions. Um, <laughs> Do those count for help? for the, the magic? If you drink two just he healing potions? Uh, two he healing potions, no. Uh, if you combine a healing potion with a potion of anything else, that's when we're going to get wild. Trouble. Actually, maybe before we go any further, since we're not taking a rest, maybe I'm going to drink a delirium potion. <laughs> yeah. So you are going to combine two potions. <laughs> no. <Maybe>. Okay, wait. <laughs> I thought you said healing potions Please. don't count, but if I mix them with the delirium potion, then it they counts. count? Um, healing counts as one when it's more than healing. Yeah, only if you combine healing potions, it doesn't count. Yeah, healing potions and healing potions is fine. Healing potions and delirium potions. I think it's so. What's worth like? It. What's like the recommended? Like on the bottle, oh. does it say like uh, wait one hour before taking another potion? It says on the bottle, not recommended for use by anyone. <laughs> do do uh, not consume. <laughs> do, do not. Um, one minute. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just take it in a minute. Okay. Okay, you're gonna take the delirium potion? Yeah. Alrighty. Uh roll a D four. Three. So you gain uh uh four levels worth of spells. Nice. Perfect. Cool. And does his eyes glow or anything weird? Oh yeah, when you not uh, not uh, uncork and knock back one of these delirium potions you can oh. see the magic run through his veins almost the moment it pours down the throat like you can see the glow of the potions as it goes down his throat and then as it comes into his body you see the octarine energy r uh, um, pulsing through his blood veins and they kind of like burst uh, a bulge forward uh, out and you can see the streaks in his face and his eyes as his eyes then turn purple and glow for the, the duration of the effect. Power overwhelming. But it th is not enough to cause a wild magic surge. I take my claw and I poke his face. I'm like, are you going to lose your hair uh, again? Ow. What are you doing? Are you going to lose your hair again? No, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm acting out the, uh, the super power me. that I feel like <laughs> I have. Remember that last time? That was great. Yeah, no, not this time. I got control oh. of the situation. If uh, if you die from drinking potions, that doesn't count for a pinky promise. Like, you can't just drink You things. pinky <laughs> promised me. It's stop. your job to stop me from drinking too many potions. I'm already going to break this promise. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I feel way better. I feel powerful. I feel healthy. I'm ready to take on all of Drakenheim by myself with you guys in the front lines. You know <laughs> that's what? That's, that's a good attitude to have. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, mm -hmm. when life comes at you it's like like making creme brulee you know i have no idea how to do it but when it comes at you you just gotta dive in face first to it <laughs> face first into the creme brulee i always dive into my creme brulee face first what is creme brulee i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's like um, is it life <laughs> it's I've like seen life it, i saw it when i was at the palace once it looked delicious i would have dived face first into it pluto my 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 dad makes a average creme brulee. Does he? I don't know. I, I think he tried once. I don't remember if it was great. We're all but, so confident. <laughs> but I'll I'll get him to make you one. Okay. Next time we're uh, back. I'm sure it. I've had it, but I just can't picture it. And now I can't. It's now like I'm thinking. Now I think of life. Like a, now I think of. <laughs> now I yeah. Stop it's like life. So moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Where will you go next? Going to the bridge. Going to the bridge. Yeah, if there's one thing we're not scared of, it's bridges. Because you know what lives under bridges? Trolls. And you know what I kill? Trolls. It's on the <laughs> shirt. It's on my shirt. Think I'm how, scared? How many trolls have you killed? At least one bridge. Sorry? <laughs> Sorry uh, a I'm bridge a is a unit of trolls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if troll, trolls are measured in bridges. Yeah. There's usually one troll. It's so frustrating having under a bridge. Yeah, yeah, every time. So like wait, just... the measurement is one to one? So why wouldn't you just say I've killed one <laughs> troll? Why do we need a... 
I, <laughs> it's more don't of a question the logic of troll slayers. Yeah. <laughs> Look, if you were a troll killer, you'd you know, I've killed like a troll. <laughs> Then you understand. Yeah, you yeah, killed I've, a whole bridge worth of trolls. I've killed a. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what, Pluto? You're right. I've killed one bridge worth of trolls. It's like a container for trolls. <laughs> Good. We <laughs> are, we are equal in our troll killing. I'm gonna have a new shirt called Bridge <laughs> Bridge Killer. Question though: Do you have fire this time? What? <laughs> Why do I need fire? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you. Don't. Short answer: I don't. You guys can all roll me a d6. Oh, <laughs> we did it. Creme brulees and trolls. Four. Five. Three. Okay. <laughs> After several hours of travel, sneakily heading along the south ward, you've come to Champion's Bridge. Ooh. It is a grand causeway which spans the Dran River, itself a bridge almost 500 feet long. And across the, the width of it, about 50 feet wide across the way. It is a large causeway that reaches up uh, almost a, like it gently arcs o- over the bridge at the highest point. The bridge is high enough that it can accommodate a reasonably sized barge or a ship or a small boat that would head along the Dran River underneath the, the central section of it. But through the, the rest of it, it is an arched causeway that reaches across. Champion's Bridge is so named for the grand statues which decorate the the arches of the city. For Drakenheim has been a city of many heroes, great warriors and generals, and the city has honored its heroes by erecting their statues upon champion's bridge um the bridge has sustained moderate damage and several of the large statues the the largest statues themselves are built along the side of the bridge almost holding up the bridge in a guardian-like pose named for the great founders and various dynasties and families that founded drakenheim for the von Kessels were not the first family to rule Drakenheim and were indeed were, usur- were usurpers over the previous ones. But the statues of those old families still hold up over Champion's Bridge, although the damage from the crater has defaced many of them. And then along the way of the bridge are smaller shrines on little balconies that jut out to other heroes that have been left over the the ages uh, and and time. Um, Dozens of small shrines have been erected here, many of which are are, uh, statues and shrines to uh, people who later became saints of of the sacred fire, people who would later be kings and generals, um, rulers, princesses, and more of the city. Guys, we're going to end up here one day on this bridge. Who's going to build? Bridge. Who's going to build the statues, though? Pluto I guess. Has... Oh, yeah. I have to do it all by. <laughs> no, I actually. Pluto has tools. That's a really nice thought because this this is actually a bridge that I have seen many many times. It's one of the few parts of Drakenheim that I've seen many many times because, well, as you know, Emberwood Village is just down the way there. Yeah. And when my dad would bring stock of his gear up to Drakenheim. We would cross the Champions Bridge to bring it to the market. So I used to, I used to actually stop on this bridge as a kid a lot and just imagine what it would be like, you know, if I was a hero and if I had a statue on this bridge. Yeah. And I would just always imagine myself. So you don't need to join some cult of the falling fire in order to be a hero. What you need is your face on this bridge. And that really says it. Draw your face. <laughs> I'm going to oh, your face here. <laughs> oh, wait. Are we? Are we just like we're not on the bridge yet? We're just like at the edge of it, or have we started walking onto the bridge? Um, you are at Champions, where Champions Way meets the bridge. I'm gonna put my face on this bridge. Me too. Okay. I. What do I have? I take my dagger, mm-hmm. and I start to try to scrape like a really crude like cat. 
like a, a round. Ooh, do the Simba from Lion King. <laughs> as, as, <laughs> she's, outline. as she's struggling to do that, I come up next to her and I cast Mold Earth and I mold a perfect Sebastian face onto the bridge. Okay. I like my better. As you come up, you can see that you are not the first to deface the bridge in this way. <laughs> No, there are many others that have left their their mark and faces. I on refaced the bridge. The bridge. <laughs> refaced the bridge. There are many others that have left their marks on the bridge, and it is reminiscent now, in many ways, of the old Eckerman Mill, uh, a marking point of. Uh, and you can see some people have left the mark, saying, "You know, our group like and dated it. Some of the which are a few years ago. Some of which are recently saying, our group got this far. Like we we made it." I I'm, I mold Earth again to make a Pluto and a Veo, and I write Drac and Force underneath it, and I put the date. Cool. I'm still whittling. I'm like, I look my better. <laughs> I want to look for uh, is is Jupiter Jones on the bridge. Um, the bridge is 500 feet long, and it curves gently. So you, you're just in a small like you're just. I'm, at the I'm start gonna kind of look uh, for, at the names as we walk as over. you walk I'm, across. I want to see if I can recognize any sure, names. Sure. Sure. There are, are many bits of graffiti, um, although respectfully, most people have left the graffiti from where the actual shrines are along the way. The top of the bridge as you go to cross it is an absolute mess. There is a large array of abandoned carts of various sizes and shapes and a very clear, as you come to the, the front of the bridge, you can see Burned into the bridge are the outlines and the skeletal remains of what must be hundreds of, of people. Not unlike the damage that has been done elsewhere in this part of the city, it seems like in the in Drakenheim's last moments, many people tried to flee across Champion's Bridge. And these are the people that were just a few moments too late. Mm. You know what I don't like about bridges? They're a, they're an excellent choke point. I was also thinking last time we encountered statues, they came alive and attacked us. Yeah. Is that a common thing in Drakenheim? So yeah. far, one hundred percent of statues have attacked us. <laughs> Only on the walls. This is a bridge. It might be different. Are you gonna have to fight <laughs> all the champions? We would win. Would we? Dragon Force against <laughs> five hundred feet of champion stone champion well i'm just thinking like this is this is stuff that we got to think about as we approach this we can't just yeah. wander across the bridge there could be well we could well what what are our other <laughs> we options could. it's not like we haven't done it before <laughs> <laughs> we could um well we could walk across cool we could prepare for the the the, the jump someone's got the jump on us yep there could be monsters there there could be statues there there could be nothing so be on super alert yeah. Mm. And do we just... Just creme brulee. Let's creme brulee this. <laughs> Face first. Face first. Face first into creme brulee. Creme brulee. <laughs> it's so fancy, too. Like, I would have done, like, a macaroni salad, but that's pretty fancy. <laughs> uh, well, hmm. yeah, I can't make that, so... It's <laughs> kind of the point. <laughs> it's okay. very fancy. Pluto. Uh, I'm going first. Come first, so okay. Yeah, and he's big and strong. And, and if you take and if all the hits, you if you hide, Veo, if you're sneaky, you could probably get the drop on someone. There's not many places to hide on a bridge. I could like crawl across on the this outside. Bridge, there are um, there are several bits of debris and rubble and ruined and overturned trade carts and wagons across the length of it. So there there is a fair amount of debris and rubble covering the whole top of the bridge. Okay, guys, we do this military style from point to point. I just imagine Pluto, if you walk straight ahead, then we'll hop behind you. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll just casually walk right up the middle of the bridge. <laughs> Sounds and, like a good plan. And me and Veo will be hopping. Are flanking from, the sides. Yeah, one of us along the left, one of us along the right from hiding place to hiding place. Yeah. Okay. And I have my bow at the ready. The bridge gently slopes upward as you cross towards the center of the Dren River. You can see rising above the haze the clock tower 
the cathedral, the mage guild tower, and castle draken. As you walk close, Champion's Bridge was a pretty awesome spot to get a look of the whole city on in its in its day. And as you cross this ancient bridge and come to the center point of it, as the the arch of the bridge arches downward, you can see and Veo, you and Sebastian are moving with stealth, but Pluto is not, correct? Okay. But I'm super aware of everything that's happening. Yep. Pluto, I as you come to the open. center of the bridge, you can see down the other side of it. And it's just before you come to the center of it, you, you can see that there is a tall figure on the the back on the opposite side of the bridge. Several tall figures they seem to be wearing a great horned helmet of some kind. I do one of the Drakenheim hold. That means he's turning. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got. Yeah. <laughs> We have never practiced any of our hand signals. Pluto, or... Pluto, it's just one direction. You can't, you can't turn. Oh, I, yeah, I... oh maybe he wants to stop. Oh, oh. well, we already are stopped. I mean, he stopped, so we stopped. Yeah. I, I, I lower my head in frustration. Now you know how I feel. And uh, what can I see about these tall hooded are they hooded? I made that up. I made up the hooded. Are they wearing hoods? There's fur. Uh-oh. They're wearing like a fur hood that has horns jutting out of it. Oh, that's not a fur hood, is it? That's like No, a... it's not. As it turns <laughs> and looks to the side, pra- placing its hands on the the, ra- the the side stone railing of the of the bridge, looking out along the sides of the bridge, it's a minotaur. Can we get past them without them noticing us? Um, I, I for sure can't. They probably already noticed him. Um, they probably already noticed Pluto. Um, how how far away are they? Yeah, how two hundred feet away? This this one doesn't hasn't seen you quite yet. It's it's tall, and so you saw its head as you crested the curve of the arch of the bridge, basically. Okay. Pluto, get back idea. here. Get yeah, back so here. I'm gonna here. I'm gonna reverse. So I'm going to slink back probably about 20 feet and then go to, I'm going to go over to Veo. Okay. I have an idea. There's a, there's a minotaur. For the first time ever, we have the drop on them. I say. For the them. first time ever. <laughs> I say that you just fire at them and me and Pluto. What if we use set up an ambush? minor illusion to make a person? Lure them on the bridge and get them to go past I can't us. make a creature with minor illusion. I can only make an object. Mm. Okay, no. But we, what we about have sound? To lure them here? They're on the bridge. Yeah. Like past us on the bridge. What if we hide and, and try to get them to like go past us? And then we can sneak past them. How many did I see? By sneak, I mean run. <laughs> At least two. There this might is, be more. This has been like the eighth time that we try to sneak past something and then we lose our advantage. Only because I'm really loud. This time, true. this time I'm saying we have the drop on them. I say we attack them now before we lose this opportunity for once in our life. I mean, I can hit them from here. But... We shoot first. All right. Ask questions later. Yep. All right, fine. You can, you can hit them from here. I've seen you do things like that. Veo. Creme brulee. Creme brulee. Creme brulee his face. I will <laughs> you, And you're so much passion. Yeah. I will One last point. Is there any way that a Minotaur is going to be our friend? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Let's just assume no. We Shoot it. Last you're, you're the monster hunter. Yeah. You should know this. Didn't you have a book? They are really into crosswords and Sudoku's puzzles. Just generally puzzles. They're huge we're into really puzzles. Bad at those. Yeah, and we're really bad at those. <laughs> all right. So if anything, he's just going to trick us. And we all know that if somebody doesn't like the same things as you, <laughs> you shoot them. Yeah, especially in Drakenheim. <laughs> that's our mo, right? <laughs> that's that's what I've taken away from this whole experience. Yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Wait, Pluto. Me. Get I'll. St- into- we get into an ambush position. <laughs> is this our ambush this position? This is not helpful because I need this hand. Just I also need this hand. Okay. 
Okay, good Just talk. Stay close. All right. <laughs> Um, so we try to get into an advantageous position. We're going to for... wait for it. Cause if, if Vera shoots it, we can just wait for them to come down. That's the, that's the idea. Mm-hmm. We loot, we, we, she starts landing shots on them. I can start flinging spells when they get close. You clean up the garbage. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm the janitor of the bridge. Bridge janitor. Caretaker. Bridge, uh, custodian of champions bridge custodian of champions the custodian of champions okay <laughs> maybe you're the champion of custodians oh even better we'll find the title so what are you going to do uh so me and pluto are going to get into an ambush position and veo i him behind like a cart is going to take a shot at the minotaur. i also want to be behind the cart <laughs> <laughs> okay so pluto and sebastian you two can make stealth checks as you go towards the cart with okay. Theo. We're staying like still two hundred feet back from them, though. Yes, but you're you're still trying to dart from one cart to another. Deal. So you're darting in and out of cover. So Ooh. all of you and Veo, do you still is Pass that Trace still in effect? No. Okay. I'm I'm rolling it too. Or I'm... Yep. Yep. <laughs> Why? Nineteen. And you guys all rolled with disadvantage due to exhaustion, correct? Yep. Oh. I'm just normally disadvantaged. Well. What you got? Uh, eight. Six. Okay. I stubbed my toe. So you clamor forward, and as you do, you stu- stumble into one of the carts, and it gets sent rolling forward <laughs> with a, lo- a lo- loud rumble, and then it screeches and cr- crashes into another one, and the and the you are approximately. <laughs> A hundred feet away from the Minotaurs when this happens, and you need to roll for initiative. Remember my plan? <laughs> <laughs> for once, for once, I thought we could get oh, the drop sorry. on an enemy. <laughs> it was like the uh, we're so bad at it. Remember that time? If it's any consolation, um, if we tried to sneak by, I also would have failed. But it would. Well, I, I think of it more like if they passed us and we just dash away. Remember? Remember the. Uh, the, the knolls that we got caught with? No, no, no. that the... wasn't dashing though. That was indecisive <laughs> movement. <laughs> Every time we've tried this plan of sneaking past something, it fails. And now apparently, even when we're two hundred feet away and we try to hide behind a cart, we throw the cart into another Is it cart. Two hundred or one hundred? One hundred. We're one hundred. Well, now we're a hundred feet away. Oh, we dashed on. Wow, we're so fast. Okay, fast. It's a body. <laughs> Are we still behind something or no? Yeah. <laughs> ah, sweet. <laughs> I guess we could now open up diplomacy now that we've failed our. Yeah, you and bef- before you is a statue of Carol Evendane, um, a famous uh, ranger general of Drakenheim, uh, who uh, helped to purge a den of lycanthropes that dwelt in Drakenheim. Uh, and uh, apparently uh, had a rather famous magical longbow, which still might be in the city somewhere. Ooh, fancy. Carol. Remember Carol. Remember. Remember. (laughs) I remember Carol. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, okay, I know Carol. There. I can read. I'm reading the same passage that you're reading. The you're same just, like, stuff. In my ear. Remember. Yeah. Uh, Remember. What did you all get for initiative? 18. 13. 14. Oh. Sebastian. Well. 18. 18. 14. 13. I was 13. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Something's getting stabbed. It's going to be me. <laughs> so I'll try to prevent that. There are three minotaurs, two bearing great axes, and another wears a cloak and is carrying a ballista. Ah, oh, this is the classic. It's so Do we try diplomacy? <laughs> Put down your ballista. I don't think that's gonna work. <laughs> that's my my. I just ask. Okay, Veo, you are the first to act. The Minotaurs um, uh, whinny and grunt. 
and begin pulling back their hooves mm-hmm. to charge forward. So they saw us. Like we're n- they didn't just see the crash. They saw yeah. us as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Minotaurs have like a really awesome perception. <laughs> Good. Great. Wonderful. I cast my Zephyr Strike as my bonus action to get my advantage since I lost it. <laughs> Not being sneaky. Uh, and I'm going to take my shots at the middle Minotaur. Okay. The the ranged one? Oh my gosh. Um, nine. The shot goes completely wide. All right, I take my second. Oh, even Seven. <laughs> and third. Fourteen. The last shot hits the Minotaur, and there's a ting in the air as it bounces off of its chainmail. Oh. <sighs> Burr. And then I move on the back part of the cart onto... I see a little kind of outpost, and I want to go all the way to the outpost. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Is she even on the battle cam? (laughs) Actually, you know what? I actually don't want to go that far. Before climbing up, I'm like, well, I'm actually just going to duck behind You look down about about 50 feet into the water below. And I make a a decision Uh, to come back. Yeah, second guess that. Yep. (laughs) Okay. Minotaurs. The Minotaur with the Ballista takes out a very strange-looking bolt. Uh Uh-oh. Loads it into his weapon and fires it forward towards Sebastian. Pluto, you said that you would... Oh, God, it's firing (laughs) at me. Pluto, get in front of me. I can stand Uh, He gets a 16 to hit. Do I have any sort of bonus because I'm behind the cart? Um, What's your AC naturally? 12. 12? You would have plus two for, for three quarters cover. I'm also going to cast shield. Okay. This is you a cast idea. shield, and as the bolt comes towards you, it opens up into a net. Ah! <laughs> that flies over Sebastian and Pluto. Well, you're able to deflect the damage of the bolt with your shield, both of you need to make dexterity saving throws. Excuse you? Uh... Eight? Nineteen. I duck behind the cart. Sebastian, you launch the shield, deflecting the bolt, and the and the net basically goes <laughs> completely up and totally ensnares Pluto, wrapping around him, and then <gasps> the heavy bolts of it uh, pin him to the to the ground. Pluto, you are restrained. Sebastian, you have avoided the, the, the shot. The other oh, two minotaurs closer. run forward. And as they rush forward, um, they each throw they um, they lower their axes and throw a smaller hand axe, one at Sebastian and one at Pluto. Uh, Pluto, you get crit, and Sebastian, I get a natural one. Nice. Now uh, I'm still ducking. Behind do they the get disadvantage because I'm behind a cart in a net? They cancel each other out. And also, I can't take crits. Right. But you can still hit me. I still hit you for 14 slashing damage. Ow! Yeah. Mm. Ow. As they thunder forward. The you seeing the Minotaurs up close, they are massive creatures um, bursting with, with muscle and bovine strength. Um, and they uh, one of them is a dark brown in fur color, the other is jet black. The other at the back with the with the ballista is mottled in color. The one with the ballista appears to be wearing armor, but the other two uh, appear to just have thick bovine hide. Pluto, you're up. Um, I want to get out of the net. Okay, <laughs> I want to try to do that. Make a strength check. Oh, it's so big. Um, eight. You can add your athletics bonus. Uh, that's only going to be 11, though, eh? Yeah. 
Sorry, you're still caught in the net. Ah! Ah! I panic. Okay. I spend the rest of my turn panicking. Okay, Sebastian, you're up. I'm kneeling behind the cart, and you're just flailing around in this net, and I kind of, like, lean over, and I'm like, Pluto, I have an idea, but it's going to be really uncomfortable. Ah! Okay. Um, <laughs> I put my hand on Pluto, and I, like the I start to concentrate as hard as I can, and my eyes just turn pure black, <gasps> and shadowy tendrils come out of my hand and start wrapping around you. Uh-oh. And you turn into a giant ape. <gasps> the netting bursts at the seams as Pluto becomes a giant ape. <laughs> this shadowy, horrific ape with, like, octarine drooling from its lips. Pluto, you feel your mind dull, but only slightly. <laughs> I'm actually way better at uh, cube puzzles when I'm an ape. <laughs> uh, Sebastian, you're standing in front of this ape. Is that where you want to be? Um, I actually, so before I finish, so I, I turn him into a giant ape. All of this shadowy energy wraps around him, creating that. And then I turn around and I point at the guy, um, the minotaur with the ballista. And I just mumble, get him. And with my bonus action, I'm going to use three sorcery points. And my hound leaps out from a shadowy dimension can your how far can your hound be conjured um so let's see hound of ill omen can be conjured um target one creature you can see within 120 feet of you. good yep so he leaps out reaper appears reaper leaps at him and i'm going to move behind the giant ape. <laughs> <laughs> so i i do that and i back away uh, does Reaper get an attack on this turn? Yes. And Veo, you're on deck. Or do I? Am I attacking yep. with the Reaper? Yeah. Seventeen. Uh, that hits. Five damage. Okay. Uh, strength saving throw or be knocked prone. Uh, he gets a twelve. It's a 13. So Reaper comes out and knocks this Minotaur <laughs> yes! to the ground. And what it's a just turn. gnawing on him. And I run and hide. Okay. <laughs> hide behind me. I'm, I'm behind you. Okay. Vale, you're up. Would I have a disadvantage if I fire at the knock prone? Yes, because okay. he's prone. Uh, I poke my head out beside the cart between the giant ape's legs and I fire at the Minotaur on your right. Okay. Uh, my shot. 17. That's a hit. Ooh. 21 damage. Ouch. And I take my second shot. 18 to hit. Hits. 19 damage. And then I slinked back behind the cart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next up are the Minotaurs. This Minotaur clamors to his feet. Oh, the... Uh, yep. Yep. Um, but let's see, and dude. seeing Reaper in front of him, um, he takes his... Ho he pulls back with, it with his horns and tries to pitch Reaper... <laughs> Hey. Mean. <laughs> Getting a critical hit against oh, Reaper. Oh. No. <laughs> Skull splitter crit. <laughs> Skull splitter crit. Oh, man. Um, Reaper takes 30 points of piercing damage. 30? Yeah. As the horrific Minotaur barrels get as he throws himself to his feet and just pierces his horns into reaper and the hound howls out ethereally uh is reaper still alive reaper is still alive okay uh he's not looking too great though cool uh and then the um the minotaur as well um is going to um step forward around around reaper um and then he's going to crouch down prone 
Uh, he's not out of the range, though. No, no. he's staying in, in range of Reaper. He kind of chuffs him aside, leaps forward, and drops to the ground. The other two Minotaurs, the first one, rushes forward towards Paluto Jackson, charging him, char- taking the bull by the horns here. He <laughs> recklessly attacks with advantage, getting a critical hit. Oh, oh man. Which, oh, because you're polymorph, <laughs> the crit applies. You have giant ape. I'm cool. giant ape. Giant ape man. As he rushes forward. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Oh man, that's a lot of dice. You you you're, you're going to be okay. Yes. Cramberlay. Mm. <laughs> uh, we got for cr- 40 damage oh. on a charge attack and you need to make a DC 14 strength saving throw. Uh, I got like a 25. Okay, so you're not knocked prone as he crashes into you. The other Minotaur charges forward into the carts. Hey. Crashing into the cart and um, pushing the cart backwards on top of Veo. <laughs> so Veo, you can make a strength saving throw. Not a dex to jump out of the way? It's coming too fast. Ooh. Eight. The cart pushes forward and topples over um, and rams into you. Uh, and you take um, 18 points of bludgeoning damage. And the cart is partially, is like almost totaled by the attack. Bye, it's not destroyed, but it's it's heavily damaged. Is it still cover? It is still cover. Okay. Just not total cover anymore. Mm, okay. Yeah. Cool. Pluto, you're up next. Um, seeing this Minotaur gouging me, I go very primal. And I start to beat my chest. And then I just start slamming it in the head with my giant ape fists. And I let out like a like a ape roar. Roar! That's it. You did it. <laughs> I did it. Um do uh, 17. 17 to hit? You're... Crash down with your fists. It hits. Uh, 17 damage. Nice. And I'm gonna keep smashing it. Smash it, smash it. Uh, uh, you actually have advantage on your attacks, because he's attacking recklessly. Okay, no crit, and... Uh, uh... Like a 24. Both hit. hit. And then... Who? Come on. There we go. 31 damage. Oh my god. <laughs> what? A 9, a 9, and a 7. <laughs> that leaves it bloody. <gasps> ah! I just started doing that ape um, yeah, that leaves it bloody. on its head. Okay. And that's my... Uh, that's my turn. Sebastian, you're up. All right. Um, Reaper is still gonna. He's gonna leap at the back of this guy again. Okay. Attacking with advantage because he's laying prone. Oh, that was a fourteen. So nineteen. That hits. Yeah. Eleven more damage. Nice. I okay. should really be using Reaper to cast a spell, but I, all my spells that would affect them are concentration. So I am going to... Um, I run out and I jump onto this cart. And I'm actually going to like jump in between these two minotaurs and then thunder step. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, they both crit their saving throws. <laughs> that was nice of them. Yeah, so good. <laughs> Double skull splitter crit. Double skull splitter crit. Wow. Stop rolling those. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank cool, you, cool, skull cool, splitter cool. dice. That was uh, you did like a cannonball though. It's still really cool. Yeah, it's still really cool. Uh, the cart doesn't make it saving throw. Oh. 
<laughs> Poor cart. <laughs> the cart did hurt you, though. Vale. Um, I'm going to use my last point to empower this spell. Just to because that was a not the best roll, and I want to get as much damage. There, eh, a little better. So that's that's twenty damage. So they take half. So ten. So they are both bloodied. Nice. Hooray! And the cart is destroyed. Yeah, the cart's totaled by it. It's thunder damage, so it just breaks into splinters. Where are you going to teleport to? That's a great question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> back behind the cart. <laughs> I teleport back to where. I <laughs> So I just run out. I run up the cart, literally cannonball, and in the midair between them, there's an explosion, and then I appear next to Veo, brushing myself off. And that's my turn. Nice. Back again? Alrighty. (laughs) To the top with Veo. All right. Since the cart is only half, I'm not going to move from where I am, and I'm going to take my first shot against the Minotaur uh, across from Pluto. Uh, using um, Zephyr Strike as my bonus action, because I want to get that advantage. Uh, Twelve. The shot hits, but it does not look like it went through his pecs. <laughs> <laughs> Just deflects it with his Minotaur pecs. <laughs> okay. Um, Rude. And I take my second shot against the same one. Oh, wow. Here we go. Um, 22. That is a hit. Solid. Oops. You're right beside him, so I get my sneak attack. Yeah? Are you based or no? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, he, he, he's gouged me. So he's he's actually inside me a little bit. <laughs> no, is that his axe is. His, oh, I thought he oh, turned his horn. His, yeah, 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 his horns yeah. Like, are like oh, part of me now. Oh, was well, that three him. ones? <laughs> no, two ones. Oh, and two, a two ones and a two. Yeah. Oh, oh, sad damage. Twenty damage. Damage. Really? Sad, sad damage. Twenty damage. <laughs> well, I mean, it's enough that he still has one hit point. <laughs> oh, <no>! oh! <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of relevant. Um, and then I <laughs> do. On him. Hop up onto the ledge, not the far ledge, but at least the first one because I don't trust that other guy down there. <laughs> oh, but I don't fall. <laughs> oh, now I'm the one next or behind the cart alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, by myself. I'm kind of crouching on the top. I'm literally okay. pushed up against the cart because I think that's a good idea. The the Minotaur over here gets up um, and attacks Reaper. Yep. The dog. Getting a uh, 17 to hit. That'll do it. Impales Reaper for 14 points of damage. And Reaper goes flying back into a portal to hell and disappears. (laughs) And the Minotaur clambers forward and takes cover behind the pile of rubble and drops prone behind it. The same rubble? Uh, No, the bigger pile that could could actually hide his Minotaur-like form. (laughs) <laughs> um because he's a big guy so he's prone behind the cover and he starts to reload his ballista uh the other two minotaurs um the wounded minotaur um does his nerve shake i can't tell what the dice no it doesn't he's angry <laughs> and he um barrels um he he barrels into um, Pluto with his great axe attacking recklessly, getting a. <laughs> Come on! Skull splitter? Skull splitter grid! What did you send him? Pew, 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 pew. What did. What, <laughs> what has science done? <sighs> You're perfectly um, sculpted if I wasn't, dice. If I wasn't a giant ape, I would have been perfectly dead balanced, twice. as all dice should be. Uh, oh, perfectly balanced, eh? Yeah. There's uh, been like eight crits tonight. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, that's 25. Slashing damage. 25 slashing damage as it oh, nice. howls in rage, over. slashes into the, the giant ape. The, the other minotaur clamors over the ruins of the cart and leaps down, bringing his axe down on Sebastian. No! Oh! Sebastian! <laughs> Getting a 18 to hit. Uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Not even shield. He we'll bears now. down with the axe for 
25 points of damage. Hmm. And I, I need I need a concentration yeah. check. What's what's my DC on that concentration? Uh it's uh 25? No, it's no. not 25. It's, it's half. half the damage yeah. dealt, so it's 13. Okay. Oh, I get 10. That's a fail. Polymorph goes down. No, I'm not an ape. It's okay. It's okay. Creme brulee. <laughs> Creme brulee. I say it with less confidence. Creme so brulee. I start to like, kind of like shrivel yeah. and like in big chunks. <sighs> you see me just get smashed with an axe and I like whimper and you just dissolve into Pluto. Oh, yep. The, the, the shadowy form just like flitters away like dust. Um... Man, I shouldn't have watched that movie again. Um, okay. We go now to Pluto. Um, I'm a man. Yep. And I'm on a mission to behead this Minotaur. You have advantage on your attack roll because he was attacking recklessly. And I'm going to need it. Um, oh, yeah. 22. That is a hit. And for 11 damage. He only had one hit point left. That's all we needed. <laughs> I was going needed for the hit. glory. What are you doing? And then I'm going to turn. How, how does it go down? Oh, okay. Um, so he, I picture his, his horns are in me. And then I and I shrivel up. Well, the, the last attack was an axe attack. So he okay. just finished slashing you. And, and as the other one leaps over the cart and brings the axe down on Sebastian, you shrivel back down into human form. And the Minotaur is very shocked by this. And so I think the axe kind of falls out of me when I yeah. get smaller. And I take that opportunity to just kind of dismember him. Nice. So I just I remove both of, his, uh, both of his arms in one slash. And he drops and so to the ground. And he's an armless In an Minotaur. armless slump. Good luck with your um, puzzles now. <laughs> <laughs> I mock him. And... <laughs> Mazes puzzles, right? They're this, it's like that's that's the thing. It's the thing I'm going with. Uh, and then I turn and I stare at the other one, and I then I you still have your movement in your yeah. second. And then I and I run at him. Okay, <laughs> and I'm gonna attack at him. this one. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I'm bringing the and I and I jump off the cart, and I what, did he attack recklessly? recklessly? Yeah, yeah. Oh baby, and I get a sixteen that hits. Nice. Woo! For um, three, for 10 damage, Kay. and I'm going to do another four damage, and he has to make a strength saving throw. Uh, he gets a uh, 16. That's my stuff. <laughs> yeah, so he, okay. he ties. Does okay. that mean he gets it? He's he, good. he saves, yep. Then I'm going to action surge and just keep driving, oh, <laughs> driving it home. Uh yeah, like a 22 for 13 damage. And then make another save. He gets a 22. What? And then he takes another one damage. And then I'm going to hit him again for... Um, oh, I have to do that. It's like a 20 for 10 damage. Uh, Pluto, you've just slain two minotaurs in a single round. <laughs> what? what do- Leo claps. <laughs> so you cut. So you unpolymorph just with a swift stroke, uh, disarm the first minotaur who's still like standing there in shock as he bleeds to death. As you leap over to the other one and just with three quick slashes, it's because th- you're above him. So I land one, on him. two, three, three strokes to cut its head off. Oh, so I just yeah, yeah I just keep going at it. And then I kick over his body and I go, I'm sorry that I wasn't there for you. <laughs> it's okay. But I'm here Blood now. It's like spraying. <laughs> it's all right, man. I understand. It's just spreading out its neck. <laughs> You've now killed more minotaurs and trolls. Oh, man. I need a new shirt. <laughs> also, it's, yeah, it's covered in blood. <laughs> Sebastian, it's your turn. All right. I um, do it. I, I get hoisted up by Pluto onto the cart. Uh, elegantly, <laughs> and I'm going to scorching ray this last guy. Cool. So you do so with disadvantage because he's prone. Ah, fine. <laughs> Nineteen. Okay, that hits. 
All right. I'm going to I'm firing all three of them. So okay. let's do Oh wait. Uh oh. 15. Uh that hits as well. Oh baby, one more. Ooh. 12. Not a hit. All right, so deflected. Sixteen damage. Nice. nice. Bolts then... of flame erupt as uh, from the area as you fire them your finger guns you. at him. And then I jump back down next to Pluto. Okay. And I'm like, there. I think I got him. He he's probably dead. <laughs> Wait, did you see him die? No. Okay. Dale, just, you're up. I'm just assuming that I did something too. Perching from the little part of the uh, bridge, again I take my bow out and I fire. Is he also still down? Yeah. Okay. Why is he hiding? He knows something. Uh, eighteen. That hits. <laughs> it's called battle tactics. <laughs> oh, get, get it, Veo. Twenty damage. <laughs> that leaves him <laughs> bloodied. And my second hit. Uh, ten. Deflected off the uh, off the cover. All right, and I stay perched up where I am. Okay. The Minotaur. Reach, steps up from the cover and fires a ballista shot, uh, or ballista shot at uh, Veo, getting a ten to hit. Nope. The shot goes completely wide. Boom. Seeing this, he puts his hand hand on the railing of the bridge and leaps off the bridge. Oh. What? Okay, bye. And there's a splash in the water below. I don't know if you want to swim in there. I like. I run and I wait for him to surface. Um, you run over, make a perception check. I'm still exhausted, aren't I? Yeah. Guys. That was two <laughs> 19s. Uh, so yeah, that's a 19. As you run up to the bridge, you, you see him swimming underneath the bridge. Vale, get to the other side of the bridge. I feline agility over to the other side of the bridge. Okay. I'm going to be waiting with a hand axe. Also on the other side? Yeah. Just ready for him to... uh... And I, like, move over here to see if he comes out this side. Okay. How long do you wait? Uh, It's... How wide is the bridge? It's about... Like, end to end, the, the 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 part that you can walk down is 40 feet wide. But then the, the extra railing makes it like so almost like 50 to 60 feet wide. 10 minutes. Yeah, I, I can make a guesstimate on how long it would take to swim 40 feet. After after a few minutes, I think I'm like, guys, what if he just like went under the bridge and then went either of the mm-hmm. directions of the bridge? Or he drowned. Uh, there is wins. that. Then in that case, we win. Yay. But I don't feel like I got... You killed two minotaurs in like six seconds. I'm gonna kill another one. Uh, let's make it three. Let's climb down. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> first, first of all, climbing. Second of all, look at that water. Have you been in that water? I've been in that water. Okay, all right. You've been in that water. I think there's I something under there. Actively avoid the water. There's something under there. I mean, if only we had somebody who was really good at climbing who could like scurry down there and just check it out. So you know how I actively avoid the water. If only we well, had if, a noble and worthy companion. If you climb well, you will climb. actively avoid the water. If only you did. Water. If only you did. If if you I'm don't. I'm not Pluto, if Sebastian. Only. If you don't fall in the water, you are avoiding it. So technically, <laughs> he raises a point. You're gonna want to not be in the water, so it's probably advantageous to climb, stay climbing. <laughs> I start to walk down the bridge <laughs> towards the tower. Wait, Veo, like, wait up. Yes, <laughs> yes, we won. <laughs> Hope you guys are coming to the tower. <laughs> I I mosey along. Uh, I'm gonna throw the way. the corpses over the side. Okay. Really? Wait. Get their horns first. Yeah, we'll check the. Yeah, I'm gonna take their horns are as we a souvenir. Poaching minotaurs. They're you know endangered much? species. What? <laughs> the the oh. lanterns will give us some gold for them. Yeah. They're an endangered in your... evil species. Can we put them in your bag of holding? Do they have anything on them? Yeah. Other than like their 
armor in their. I forgot that I had a magic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on one of them, uh, one of them has a um, a potion of healing on him, Ooh. and I'm the other because okay. you used mine. I know because I in a one. small satchel. I'll throw it to Veo. Um, in a small small satchel, it looks like he has several alchemical and material components for a couple spells. Like he had looted it. Um, and in and amongst all the rest of it uh, are um, are some pieces of delirium. Ooh, how many? Um, what there are um, several fragments of delirium. Uh, each are probably get worth at least 100 gold pieces a piece, and there's three of them inside. We now have six fragments. Yeah, veo has got a tracker on it. You said that the the po- like the component bag it looked like it was like stolen? Or it's like his? Who knows? Oh, okay, I thought it was like a... I'll take the components. I mean, I'll add them to my pile of garbage that I use to cast spells in emergencies. As long I as no one takes your garbage. I want to look yeah, around the rest of garbage. the bridge because there's carts and everything. Um, I want to look at the statues to see if there's anything of value around them that people may have left. Hmm. Anything like that. Is uh, my mother a statue? Mm. Any sorcerers? Any any members of the Amethyst Academy? Especially Am the I ranger. I want to look at the ranger especially. Notably, there are no people here that could that are members of the are or referred to as members of the Amethyst Academy. It's actually quite notable. Because are there like members from like the Hooded Lanterns? There are members of what would have been the predecessors of the Hooded Lanterns. Right, because like the city guard. Um, because the city, the Hooded Lanterns take their name from the city watch, but the actual city guard and the army of, of Vestemar would have had their commanders in, um, marked along here. Yes. Mm-hmm. Any other notable names as we uh, tour along? Um, yeah, we would take time to like check out the statues. Yeah, we yeah. Have the scenic route now that there are no minotaurs. Yeah, there. Um, won't kill the min. We won't chase the minotaurs, but we'll do the sightseeing. <laughs> yeah, We're doing like a sightseeing. Uh, another tour. statue that you pass is a Crumbly. is a flame uh, flame keeper faith barley keeper, who was uh, the founder of the order of the unicorn. Um, a uh, and known as a famous order of vampire hunters within the um, uh, the Order of the Unicorn being an order of vampire hunters that were founded by the church. Um, wow. And uh, she being one of the most famous vampire killers of the age. So even before Drakenheim had all of these monsters and issues, we apparently had werewolves and vampires to we deal with. A huge vampire and werewolf problem. Yeah, now we some, just have a gnoll and some a classic minotaur monsters. problem. <laughs> yeah, we've just replaced some monsters mm. with different monsters. Mm. Maybe we're the monsters. Shh. I want to check the statue <laughs> of that uh, lan- a lantern that we passed by. Yeah. See if there's anything notable around her. Um, just, just the inscription of... Uh, of what uh, of what he achieved and and what uh, what they did as ranger general of the of the city, mm. um, and the statue very prominently de- demonstrates the the bow that they used to own. But it's a stone bow. It is indeed. Um, <laughs> salvaging that bow. Um, salvaging around the the bridge. It depends on how much time you want to to search through it, but there probably is a fair amount of things that you could salvage around here if so you wanted to go through hour? it and strip through it. Yeah. Half hour. Or, or half we, could hour. Do the, we could do the whole hour and do a short rest. Well, Can we spend a short rest salvaging? No. no. Oh, okay. Um, I think we could take an hour to cross the rest of the bridge, uh, rummaging through. Yeah. I mean, you're less than an hour away from the tower as well. True. Yeah. I but I mean, like, I'll... Slow pace and... I'll sure. check carts yeah. and stuff as we're going. As you do, so you manage to find um, there's lots of tools um, and ruined foodstuffs and uh, various sets of trade goods, um, several uh, weapons that are in good condition, ammunition, nothing that's of better quality than your current equipment, but 
you do find a uh, a old merchant's cart uh, that hasn't been overturned yet, and inside is a small chest that is clinking with the sound of coin. Can you open it? I mage hand open it. Suspicious. There's several gold bars and coins inside it. Probably about 500 gold pieces. I mage hand close it and drop it into my bag of holding. Just going to add that. Maths on that. 500? I got three. I get two. You guys figure out the rest. (laughs) That's like 150 each. I mean, I'm yeah, that was okay pretty easy. That. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> you, you can have the extra. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if there's any small supplies that you're looking for, you could probably salvage something from the ruins amongst here. No, I'm looking for a magical bow. <laughs> Nothing of that nature. Yeah. A lot of it has been picked over, but you get one lucky find. One day I will find this bow. It will be mine. What was the name of the... Ranger? Uh, Carol Evendane, and the bow is called Whisper. Whisper. We'll keep eyes open. <laughs> tools. I was just I mean, looking at tools. I've been keeping an eye open throughout my time here because I know it's been a prize that people have been seeking, but no luck so far. No? I'm still, guys, there's still like a, like a, like a minotaur den under this bridge. You think it's under the bridge, like the whole den? Like, it, probably. So what happened to the trolls? You said that the, there was trolls under the bridge. Say- well, there could be trolls. Now there's just minotaurs. Well, yeah, that's the thing about containers, like bridges. They can have... So we've officially killed one bridge of minotaurs. So three minotaurs equals one troll. You're getting it. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? You're getting it. One and bridge- we didn't actually kill three, we killed two. I killed two. <laughs> Specifics. <laughs> Specifics. One got away. I got and one I down like, to one hit. And I don't like that. I don't like that one got away. How did it feel being a giant shadow ape? Um, scary. <laughs> I really wanted to fling my feces. <laughs> and it took everything in my... Like, I had this gut reaction. Yeah, you know, when I changed into one, too, same thing. It's, it, it, it was just weird, like, right? weird primal thing in there that was just like... like <laughs> you could use poop as a weapon. And I'm like, no, man, no. It's and an animal thing. Yeah. It's I actually get like... that urge to do that to you guys a lot. <laughs> I just can't resist. It's a sign of love. It's not a bad battle tactic. It's just, you know, I don't usually have those thoughts. And then I turn into a giant ape and suddenly there they are. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's like, you know, comes with the territory. We've now both been a giant ape. That's one thing we have in common. That saved me. Don't turn I would. I would have died if I got crit twice by... <laughs> Minotaurs. So what you're saying is uh, Sebastian Crow saved your life? Yeah. Can I have your card? <laughs> here's my here's my business card. <laughs> All right, let's make our way to the tower and finally get some rest. <sighs> Wait a big day. And see a my bath. pigeons. No. Yes. Water for drinking. <laughs> I will separate some drinking water. You can use mud. Uh, guys, you I'm having a bath. At, no, you don't get to bath. You arrive back at the clock tower uh, coming back from champions bridge and surveying the familiar devastation of the market square there it is before you is the grand astrological clock of drakenheim the multifaceted face of the clock depicting all the planes and all their connections in addition to the date and time the clock still locked in that ominous position between pandemonium and limbo that it was stuck in almost 111 years ago. As you come up the steps of the clock tower and push open the heavy doors, you can hear the chattering of rat folk as they, they laugh and squeal. And there's, there's a, you, the sound of a bow being knocked, and then you hear a voice saying, No, 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 don't shoot, don't shoot! His ghost, his ghost, is good! Yes, yes, yes! They friend! Not pray. We not shoot them. They okay. <laughs> Petunia. It's so soothing to hear his voice. Rat Prince. I feel so comfortable. I'm like, come here. Can I have a hug? We've had a oh, yes, 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 yes. I hug him because I'm just like, and I rock him actually like a baby in my <laughs> arms. Because I'm like, 
so good to see you. <laughs> we very, very safe here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Ew. This good tower. Yeah. It I is? promise you we not eat little birds. We find other things to eat. Oh, good. That's very, great. very good, good. things. Yep. Um, some manlings come by here. They come saying, Sebastian said it was safe for us to come here, so we kill them and eat them. <laughs> oh, no. Did we send other people here? Oh. They have these very nice green cloaks. I'm wearing one now. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. No, can you show us where the bodies are? He points to his <laughs> stomach. Oh no. The bones? You eat the bones too? Oh no, no, no. We have them over oh, oh, over here. Some over there. Some over there. This one still has bits left on it. Okay, uh, guys, we can't send anybody else to the clock tower. We have a great defense. We have to remember that we said. <laughs> we have a great defense at our tower now. Uh, don't send anybody here. Oh my god. So is that the hooded lanterns? Which no. One? Who's the green? Deny, deny, deny. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't see we didn't. anything. Nobody came by. Great job, though. Good, uh, good place. job, defending. Yeah. Yeah, good test. Tower. test. Yes, yes, yes. We yeah. do a good job. We did great. Such a good job. We get very nice reward. Eating people very, very tasty. Yes, that can be your reward. You eat anybody that comes to this tower unless they have a note <laughs> from us. And what is note? It'll have a paw print uh, like this. And yeah. I like make a paw print in like the door. Oh, that easy. I cannot read. Yeah. If yeah. you see so that. So if you see a paw print on a piece of paper, it means not to eat them. How I know they not kill you, chop your hand off, use your hand to make fake Because you are the only one who knows about this paw print No, but secret. he's on to something. He, maybe we just don't send anyone. What if they try to trick me? <laughs> but this what like if they good... try to make foolish fool of me? Okay, just kill anybody that comes here other than us. Yes, yes, yes. I like this. Yeah. Yeah, we'll you know that's just to, like climb to the second floor first before going. Oh so that man, way that they avoid the first floor. I You're only on the first floor, who right? Who did we send? Oh no, 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 no! We like all the heights. Yes, yes. Oh, many, no. many nice rafter r rafters for the little ones to climb around. But you didn't go. You didn't mess with the mojons. That was instructions. You didn't mess with the robots upstairs. I gave you those instructions. I did not, but but no. but scree scree go up there, try to touch shiny, and then explode. Oh no! Yeah, avoid touching the shiny. The you probably know that. Is. But there are many click clock tick tocks. This is a very interesting place. We like this. Yes, 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 yes. That's great. So great. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna make a list of rules. You can't read. I'm gonna make a list of rules and I'm gonna tell them to you every time I see you. Yes. Keep it short. That sounds complicated. No, here it is. Don't touch obelisk. Don't, oh, sorry. <clears throat> Don't touch shiny. Don't hurt robots. Don't touch any shiny. Uh, well, don't touch, upstairs. don't touch anything upstairs. How about that? That's the only rule. But what is upstairs? Like how far upstairs is stairs? There are many stairs here. Uh, there, if you go up high the enough, robots. there's that hatch. Nothing shiny with the robots. Nothing above the hatch. How am I supposed to remember that? That very specific task. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if you guys touch the thing, then you're just going to explode into nothing. So. But it's so funny. Oh. You know what? You're right. Just. That's fine. You just do you. you don't touch yeah, it. Just Who cares about everyone yes, else? Yes, yes. Just you don't touch it. Yeah, you don't touch it because we like you. Can okay. you show I mean, us we the... like all the rats. Can you show yeah. us the equipment of the people you ate? Oh, yes. And he, he ruffles through his jerkin and pulls out. They have these nice shinies. And oh. it's like the dog tags of the hooded lanterns. Oh. It's not like I read the dog tags. Is what it anybody that we know? Is it uh, Sten's brother? <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, you see the 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 names on their badges, and and there's there's Mina and Oster and Grouse and Klein, all people that that y you know you you knew. There's at least four. Burn there's it. four of them. Burn it all. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get rid of those. Um, and uh, I knew Mina. She's real nice, but obviously. She came in and messed with our stuff, so yeah, nah. yeah, because we because we sent them here. We they were very surprised to say say us. They come in, we hide. They come in, they be like, "Oh yes, yes, yes." They think they were going to be safe camp, and then they make camp to be safe. They all very hurt and wounded. So we come down in the night and we stab them and slit their throats and eat them. It very good. It's a I mean, good, good battle tactic. Good plan. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, so good. Good job. I'm gonna go upstairs <laughs> now. I'm. I have to leave. Sebastian I, needs a drink. I, I need a drink. Do you have wine upstairs? I have Lyrian ale, yes. We have one more. 
No, but do you have just like your own stockpile upstairs? No. I have two wines on me. Well, that's good because I brought my own stockpile upstairs. Oh, okay. I made up right now, I but I'm going to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. I go upstairs and I have a bath in the drinking water. <laughs> Stop. No, you Reference, can bathe in the water. Come cuddle with me. I need a I light animal a, to sleep with. I light a candle, I pour <laughs> myself some wine, pile. and I have a bath I like in the drink. I snuggle water. in in the rat pile. Rats and cats. And that's how I take my rest. Rats and, cats. and how does Pluto take his rest for the night? I'm gonna go to the top floor and kind of look out and just try to forget that the rat people ate. <laughs> The hooded lanterns, just <laughs> just more lies, <laughs> just more lies in Drakenheim. It's weighing heavy. Hmm. Drakenheim. You, you should just try some wine in a bath. You forget all about how many people just died. And with that, that's where we'll end for the night. Oh. <laughs> we made it. We take a long rest. Yes, you take a long rest, oh, and we'll God. pick it up from there next time. I'm not exhausted. Right. That was good. That's good game, Josh. Yeah. 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 That wraps it up to, for this evening. Uh, a big thank you uh, to our cast, Jill, Kelly, and Joe, for playing along so well uh, tonight. And a huge thank you to Kyle for working behind the scenes to manage the stream. Uh, and as well to our producer, Clayton, who gets the episodes edited up and up on YouTube every week as well. Also, a special thank you to Axe and Shield for providing us with the awesome gaming accessories we use at our table. You saw the initiative tracker. You should definitely also check out. Uh, he just launched a Kickstarter, yes. and uh, you should definitely jump on that because he's making some new cool accessories to elevate your Dungeons & Dragons game. Uh, big shout out to Tabletop Audio again for the free ambient music. Um, we'd love to hear feedback. Did, did, did it serve its purpose on the bridge? Did it feel like I killed a bunch of minotaurs? Let us know. Tabletopaudio.com. It's free. And finally, thank you to Hundred Years Boar for the amazing narration voiceover in our intro video. Check them out here. Streaming on Twitch. We use terrain and scenery made by Dwarven Forge. And all of our miniatures were manufactured by Hero Forge and WizKids if you want to check them out yourself. And also, tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim was sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. So and many crits. There oh, were so, so many, many crits. crits. The power of these golden dice has uh, really come through. So yeah. Tonight was a crit heavy episode. So thank you, Skull Splitter Dice. And if you want your own set of premium metal dice that will crit at your table, uh, <laughs> make sure to go to skullsplitterdice.com and you can get 15% off your first order if you put in the discount code DDUDES. And if you are enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, be sure to check out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And by joining our Patreon, you get access to our amazing Discord community, which has been so much fun. Uh, we all get to chat with everybody in there and just talk about whatever nerdy stuff we want. There's also behind the scenes on Drakenheim, DM advice, player advice, character building, and a special little channel that you can go into that three of us don't have access to, where you can talk privately with Monty about theories on what's going to happen next in Drakenheim. Pretty cool. Yeah. And of course, check us out at youtube.com slash dungeon dudes, where Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday covering everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for DMs and guides for players. You'll also find prior episodes from this campaign available for your viewing there as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim. <laughs>